and welcome back to the only show that breaks down, cracks up, skews, and reviews each week's DC Comics. I'm the bastard son of General Zod, Eric Shea. And I'm Jim Warner. And this is the Weird Science DC Comics Podcast, episode number 531. 531. Do you mean you're a bastard and his son? Because I think that after this week, Lord Why Zod can't it be is that. Well, it can be. You could be anything you want, Eric. That's the dream of this little game we call life. Me being the bastard son of uh, General Zod like this, with the Lord Zod being on the outs, maybe Daddy won't want me back. Oh, yeah. Oh, he'd go right to you. <laughs> he's right. You're on the stoop waiting for Zod. <laughs> Got my suitcase packed and everything. Now he's there. You're kicking your Take feet. Take the new candle, the Daddy. Oh, my God. He's like, show me the bottle city of candor. Oh, oh, we can't oh. do that just about now. Maybe. You know, take a wish upon a shooting bottled city of candor. That's what you do. And then your dreams all come true. Or you die. Daddy. I don't know. I don't know. But here we are with episode 531. We're already skewering and reviewering, Eric. And we only have yeah. four books again this week. It's one of those things. I keep saying that a lot of these mini series ended up ending. They didn't replace them. So we do have less books, which means we can take time to, to dissect them, Eric, and really oh, yeah. dive. Dissect them? You got some deep thoughts to you? With our deep thoughts. And now I'm looking at my every note of mine is like a, a toilet humor joke or something like that. But I that's, even know why that's I gotta take the notes. deal. Uh, I, actually, this week, I didn't really need to take many, but there's some. That I like to remind myself. Oh, there's a joke. Oh, it's a joke and deal toilet humor. Uh, so welcome to the show, everybody. And it's kind of cool. This last couple of weeks, I will tell you, Eric, that a lot of people have kind of checked out the show a little more. And we even have a bunch more people joining up on the Patreon. And it was awesome. one of my kind of fears because overall we do well i'm like oh my the god the show's what? doing good right now and people like us what are my true fears eric pretty soon i'm gonna go up the next tax bracket no i'm not doing that the idea where I, I had a fear of the big two especially you know dc but really marvel as well obviously the idea where we rely on them doing good things and sometimes they don't right now it is a little down a lot of people are a little bit off and I realized this week, even from some comments, I'll even give a shout out. A Cal Kella ended up saying it on our things on YouTube. Basically, the idea where some people seem amazed that while we, you know, don't like a lot of books, we don't sure really, we, do. we don't really change from when they're really great, when they're bet we were honest with them and don't change if something's not as popular or whatnot. We just give our opinion. And I see people realizing this again. This happened before, and it happens in spurts with the deal, but with the books going down in quality a bit, we just do our thing, right? We're just telling our deal and nothing new. And also, we like to warn people about things coming down, like when I make my mumbo jimbo, you know, prognosticating that rarely comes through. I've been I've been pretty good lately. I haven't heard of Mumbo Jimbo in like eight years. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just saying, guessing things. I actually thought that the Mumbo Jimbo, it, it contains music that might get me in trouble. But when we have all this stuff going, I love when I get something so right that you think that I've cheated somehow. I'm like, I, I still think no, it by the end I have of the no day. way to cheat. I don't have any Not way. True. You know I will, but I, <laughs> I don't have a way, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, a little shout out, like I said, to Cal Keller, who did kind of pick my spirits up a couple of people and a couple of people have come back and one is jeremy jeremy who if you haven't heard him do the wrong turn nevermore it's the greatest thing i've ever heard <laughs> in my life and i i have actually i was talking about it's when there's weird things with me and you we end up saying this now i'm not saying this in a way that i think that me and you control the cosmos Eric. all right but good a lot of times we do say like out of nowhere we'll bring somebody up and unfortunately they'll die Jeff Luckily, Flaherty. Yeah, Jeff Flaherty. We were just talking about him last week, like really deep diving into talking about him. Then he goes down. Well, I was talking to Ruben and some other people, and I kept mentioning Jeremy. Thank God he didn't die. I think yeah. that's when me and you get together. But when I, I was talking, I'm like, oh, man, I miss Jeremy. It was stuff about Wildstorm and things like that that he always used to like and even did reviews on the podcast. So I was mentioning, and then he popped up again. He ended up uh, not even coming. He never left. He just hadn't talked to me. I said I thought he was taking a break from me. He said he took a break from comics. I think he met Jim. But we were talking Obviously. about things. He was going to send in an email this week. Hopefully, he gets it for next week because I'd like to hear what he has been up to. But here we are in a little intro there. Right? A little intro. We've been doing this for a while. We should 
know how this rolls, right? Yeah, you know what I'm saying, Eric. I'm having problems as always. I will tell you, uh, speaking of toilet humor, uh, I ended up where right when I was setting up, I realized I really have to go to the bathroom, but I was already, I already extended when we were going to start a bit to read some stuff and get things. So I did not want to make it even more to piss you off. So here we go. We're, We're on a thread here. Eric, but if you want We're to go and find her. What does that even mean in the context? We're on a thread, boys and girls. Get them, boys. We're here uh, the thread hopefully of my underwear. The three, hopefully the three fates don't come around to Golden Scissors and cut that thread. Yeah, they cut that, and all of a sudden I'm no longer an adult <laughs> because I'm going to poop my pants. But, hey, if you want to find us on the internet, you can go over to Twitter at Weird Science DC. You can see me fighting with people there. I was fighting with some people this week, and I think you'd appreciate it. Uh, I don't it, think so. Well, yeah, how the, how does it come down to a thing where I'm actually defending Star Trek? I don't even know what this world means when that happens. Star Trek. You just Eric. need someone to fight with, no matter what it's about. Yeah, they, they, these people seem to like find me though. They, these were directed so. at me. Yeah, they they added me for. I don't even know why. Why? Because you talk so much shit on Star Trek. Well, yeah, but I was defending it. I was. I think. Well, that's you're right. Now, I th- no, that's the thing. I think you might be onto something. I think they actually added me because they thought I hated it. Oh, you might be right. Uh, I might be crazier. They but find me somehow. I don't understand why they would do this. Found me through things I said and did. I can't believe this. I've been on the down low with that. But Stork will appreciate it. I was going to get Stork involved, but I didn't want him to get involved in the hate. So uh, he needs to have a hat. It's my fight. Unlike me. Yeah. So all that you can also go to our website at weirdsciencedccomics.com and check out reviews from Sus Gabe, some of which aren't even up yet. I forgot to uh, <laughs> publish a couple there. He's going to hate me. Uh, and then also go over to our YouTube channel, Weird Science Comics, and that involves the big two, DC, Marvel, but also indie. No more manga. That gets flat. I don't need that shit. And also <laughs> then go to our Patreon, as we talked earlier. There is some people coming in and checking it out. They seem to be happy. It's patreon.com slash weird science. And there you can get a ton of shows. Like I said, again, Marvel, DC. I don't know why I said Marvel first on the DC podcast, but also indie and manga on that because they can't flag us there, Eric. We're on the down low, but we have a bunch of different shows. I have been mixing in more indie stuff with the stuff that I do, and I even ended up having a show where I reviewed all of the new Ghost Machine books. So if you're interested in it's stuff so like spooky, that. It's so spooky, Ghost Machines. And I said, this was more of a YouTube thing at first, and I said that people have told me reviews, especially indie reviews, don't work. On YouTube now, after putting out these three videos, they're right, Eric. But I still do it. We ended up. That's one of the things too. Since we started, we don't really go by that clicks and stuff. We do what we want to do. It's why we haven't succeeded as much as others, I think. But it works out. But yeah, go over to our Patreon, Patreon.com/slash Weird Science. And one of the big things each week, every Thursday night, me and Eric get together for a spotlight episode, the Badass Patreon Spotlight. Where two books picked by the badasses of the Get Fresh crew uh, uh, in a poll each week of all the books. And what they pick is what we do. And this week we ended up doing Birds of Prey number eight and Shazam with an exclamation point number two. Damn ten. right. That's, I hate writing that. I hate it because, because there's nobody who's going to type that exclamation point when they I look do up. Each and every time we talk about it. You do that way, but you're not going to search. For Shazam number 10 on the Biggest, internet by typing I in will. that exclamation point. Yeah, you will now because you want to prove me wrong. No, it's just jerk. something I do because I enjoy the Captain Marvel character and the Shazam because that's how you have to say it. You got to have that exclamation point at the end. You got to be like, Shazam! It's like when you used to yell Magog at work. <laughs> Magog! Oh, my God! <laughs> it was more of you like shrieking the Magog. I, I will tell you, people, if you don't know, two things that Eric, you know, demands for that. Shazam with an exclamation point. And for some uh-huh. reason, he does not sing Flash without that the. When there's Flash, the you, Flash uh, man. you always put you? the the. At one point, I think we were even doing reviews, and you went on your own and put a the because I didn't. Because you drove me uh, nuts yes. each and every month. I like, just it is flash. the Flash. I don't think people write in the the when they search it. I'm all about the searchables, Eric. Uh-huh. You're about the edibles. I'm about the searchables, and that's how it edibles? works. No, I don't. Uh-huh. I do have gummy multivitamins that I pretend they're edibles. I'm like a little kid. I'm like, oh, I'm going to take my edibles. Oh, my God. You're so old, your teeth can't take actual vitamins. That too. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to get the dinosaur and I'm going to get the crocodiles. They're not. They're not. not. These these are adults. A dinosaur and a crocodile. 
These are the shapes. There's no shapes. I was making it up, but I couldn't oh. think of anything else. Should I have said just a say, dinosaur? Just say another a dinosaur. Sh- a shark? No, that doesn't make any sense either. Then you would have asked me which dinosaur, and then I would have I messed would. up. A velociraptor. Maybe a goddamn dinosaur. And, and a, 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 a stegosaurus. Just say a T-Rex and a Triceratops. That's all you got to do. I'd probably go a Stegosaurus. Brontosaurus would be one of the bigger ones. Triceratops, our favorite. J- just run down the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. You'll be fine. Oh, okay. So I'm like here. Uh, I got my pink ranger. Green dragon. And I got the green ranger. And I got the, the shirt truce. You're doing it wrong. The periwinkle ranger. I was talking to somebody about uh, the uh, power rangers. And they were naming names. And I, I pretended that I knew what they were saying. <laughs> I had no idea what they were talking about. But I just nodded my it's head. It's a pop yes. culture icon. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, there you go. But these two books, as I said, picked on a poll each week by the badasses of the Get Fresh crew. Uh-uh. Boop, and boop. when you end up on the badass level, you not only get to tell us what we're going to do, but you also get your roll call shout out, Eric. Here it goes. No rapping. I'm doing good, good today. Are you? I don't know. The, the time we're recording is throwing me off. Here we go. We have Don't Mention It, a new badass. Nice. So thank you for joining up. D-Man 3001, David Fink, Trevor, Wakazashi Gray, I, Dead a Nation, yeah, yeah, Eric K, JLG, Big Z, The Mark Claire Show, Annihilator, Ted Probst, I love Punchline Stork, Star Trek fan. Loser. Yeah, me too. Michael S. Loser. Cam, uh, not Michael S. I meant you <laughs> heard it. I'm like, no, I didn't say that. We Cam. all know what you meant. Matt Razor, Niels T. Ward, Stephen Baum, Jason Kobe, Sue 42 to me and you, Michael G., Ken Halleck, Comic, Boom, Rocky, R- Gut Rudy, Mark Jager, Phil Abir. Me and him have a show where we do the, uh, what's that, the amalgam stuff, right? Yep. Ruben. Carlos, Noah Barr, oh, Matthew Rabiel, Luke Hollywood, I was, Simon, Luis, Man, Chip, Andrew Belfast, Swanee, Anthony G, Josh Million, Batman Beyond, Mark, Brandy Murray, that's Beam, you're up in Buffalo, Canada, and then Doxing his ass in Minnesota, Double A, Ron, oh, and then a shout out to the all 10 greats, Reginald Drinkwater and Rob Lewis, Mm-mm. I think I might have forgot to give him a shout out last week, now that I think Maybe. of it, um, yeah, and I, I want to do this because sometimes, you know, we don't get to hear from some people i didn't hear from jeremy for a while and i'd like to use this time after the bed us roll call eric to give a shout out to somebody i haven't heard from and really would like to luke hollywood oh the guy is supposed to be recording stuff with me on the manga side i haven't heard from him in three weeks he's in a different country it's weird over there though he yeah in ireland yeah they they go they go by a different time deal it's five o'clock all the time eric right five i get that reference (laughs) Ah uh, yes. Uh he even he even got in the slack today to mention that he is keeping away from me and won't respond to me, which I thought I would kickstart him in the deal. I have all these things like are we gonna do this today? Hey, when are we gonna do this? Uh but like I said, also with all the newer people on the Patreon, some people call him patrons, Eric. I like to call them co hosts I haven't met yet. There's my joke. Ah, <laughs> uh, you didn't like that? You didn't like the <laughs> co host I haven't met yet. Just to point out that I do a lot of shows with other people and patrons. But this on is after the you pointed out another co-host who doesn't want to talk to you right now. Really, what I'm doing is fishing for somebody who's reading manga. I might want to get a hold of me. If, hey, everybody, if you read Spy Family and also Demon hey guys, Slayer, if you join the Patreon. You won't want to talk to me real fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you? You'll, you'll not want to talk to me. But there you go. That is the beginning. Those are the badasses. Shout out to everybody. On the Patreon, new and old, but we have four books. So this is going to be free, clear, easy peasy. Thank God, Better because be. Eric has WrestleMania tonight. Fuck so yeah, we have to do that. Weekend. Yeah, it is. And it's in Philadelphia. Who sure would have is. It? WrestleMania as, 40. A, as a kid, can you imagine that it would be in Philadelphia? Eric, you'd never think of it, even though it yes. was before. And it was one of those. It's not a good memory for you, right? That that WrestleMania. Didn't your dad take a girlfriend or something? To no, that no, that was WrestleMania trouble? 1. Uh, but it still was WrestleMania, so yeah, yes. yeah. It brings up and it that. wasn't a girlfriend; it was his future wife and baby mama. Was that like Star? Was that who it no, was? No, uh, it was my stepmother Laura. <laughs> okay, so at least it was a legit thing. All right, so there you go. Or stepmother, as Eric likes to say, somebody who will ignore me later in life. Right? Is that the joke here? Why <laughs> would Why would they not ignore me? <laughs> well, because you're still part of the deal. Just because you didn't come out Part of the womb. Part of the deal. Right? I'm you, you're you want, you want your me to dad's talk, family? You want, me my, you want me and my stepmother to talk to each other? I don't talk to my brothers and sisters. 
Okay, now you're now you're just exposing yourself as a jerk, Eric. I, I wish that you were. No, you I'm antisocial. To, you do I'm talk anxious, to them sometimes. Awkward. You are, so am I. I actually explained that to Mark Jager when we went to the buffet. I said, not that I said that you've dissed him or anything. What I was saying, if Eric was there, boy, it was packed, Eric. You would not have liked it. You would not, not have at all. And I would have sat there watching you I like going to the Wawa sometimes. Yeah, the Wawa. I don't like going to the bathroom or the shower sometimes, but I, that doesn't stop me sometimes. Too anxious. But, yeah, too anxious indeed. But that is the beginning. We're going to go off to these books. We have some big ones, I guess. I mean, Batman's oversized, so that's big. But I do have to decide in between here if I want to have a rockin' song or an emotional song as we go. Rockin', so that is, that is what we have to decide on, Eric. Also, I do want to point out, too, a bunch of people, for some, you like that hard rock intro from last week, right? That Love was it. what it, it, people seem to want to stop there and have, like, I have like five people who are like, can you just have that one? I think they're annoyed by the other one. But I like the Southern Rock. That one had some nice changes. It had some really classic, like, Leonard yeah. Skinner changes. Look, but- look I, I know exactly when you're on. And you're not always on. But when you are, mm. I will tell you all about it. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see coming up. That either rocking or emotion. Dark prisons. Do dark <laughs> prisons. So, nothing so, else. So you've already, I didn't know if you've listened to it yet. Of course I did. We'll be back in a moment with the books. Yes, Eric, we're just inmates in that dark prison here, and that's what we're going to start with. We have the Batman. I forgot how that ended. <laughs> like, I thought I faded it out. I'm like, oh, crap. Uh, but here we are. We have the big book of the week. Batman should always be, should be. the yeah. big book. Yeah, it's, it hasn't been, and it's kind of a shame. Me and you were talking on our Patreon spotlight this week, and I mentioned the idea. I think I did. The idea where Batman and Spider-Man are kind of down. Recently, and you kind of need those. You need those. And if we didn't talk about it on the Patreon, we definitely talked about it after the Patreon. (laughs) Yeah, I remember. I think I did talk because then you mentioned they always sell, and I said, "Yeah, they they will always sell." But it might have been after we talked a while afterwards this week, like an hour or so. Couldn't get enough of each other, Eric, is what they say. Uh, But I don't know. It's one of those things with Chip Zdarsky's run. It has been so disjointed, so it's hard to really even get a grip. And there, it's a weird play because of that. There are people, and the people I talk to, even you, Eric, because I do talk to you occasionally Sometimes. when we're recording. Uh, everybody has that like caveat. Well, well, I liked it before this, or I liked yep. the, you know, the back god stuff at that point. And then some people say, unlike you, I like a lot of it, but not when he was jumping off the damn moon. That was when you were full in, but. A I lot saw of people was, talking this week, the idea that it, it fell apart after the Multiverse of Saga. And I'm like, I think it fell apart at the beginning of the Multiverse of Saga. I was just going to say, a lot of people see that, uh, to me, I don't know. To me, I'm just like here They blame the Gotham War, and I'm like, I don't know. It's kind of lame before that. Night Terrors with a K? I mean, yeah. not that that did anything to the book, except 
you know, pretty much make a it, but whatever. It, it made a delay. I mean, the, the thing about this whole thing is we talk about books being delayed all the time and how long you delay two months. It hurts a book. And that was a scheduled kind of delay. And, and then you come back, then you do Gotham War. And I think Gotham War to me was the last straw for a lot of people. I didn't, I, I, for me, it wouldn't be the time where I'm like, oh, now I'm upset. This would be like, oh, bullshit, I'm done. But when we came back, it's everything like that. We come back from Gotham. I'm like, okay, well, we have the, the you know, fail safe and that one issue where we had Batman beat the, and then we get Joker year one. I, I mean, I even forgot about that. Like every step of the way, you have some momentum and then you kill it. Now we're at what seems to be a kind of like finale run for at least the Zornar fail safe story going towards the absolute power. And I kind of just end up, to, everything is kind of piling on top the of everything. The was a mess. Yeah, and, and you realize now that it was, and somehow this issue, Chip Starsky decided that he's going to clean house here. He's going to end go. up doing some spring cleaning and pull things together, but does it in a weird Tom King-esque way that I don't know. We're going <laughs> to, I'll have to see what you think. Uh, I don't hate it. I'll tell you right now, spoiler. But hey, I just I can't kinda, say the same. Just kind of <sighs> shaking my head. I'm kind of I'm like numb to it. Like this book has become my Zoloft that I'm just like, all right. I have a stupid grin on my face. Drool <laughs> coming out the sound. It's fine. Stop taking so much Zoloft. I, I end up like I like the Zoloft. Isn't it like candy? I like to call it my edibles, Eric. <laughs> so everything to me is my edibles. This is Batty. Batman. Oh, that's not nice. Batman number one forty six. It is part two of Dark Presence there, just like the song said. Written by Chip Zdarsky, art by Jorge Jimenez, Tomo More, and Clayton Coles. At points, I would say that I'm kind of, you know, sad for Jorge Jimenez. He's doing a good job. He's yeah. doing his stuff, right? But it's it just there's not a lot to do. And and when you do have everything going on, most of the time, say in the Detective Comics by Ram V right now, me and you will talk about, and I'll complain to you about the idea of, like, where's Dick Grayson? Where's Tim Drake? Like, all this shit going doing on. doing stuff. But in this book, you have them, and I still say that. What, what are they doing? They're, Stephanie they're Brown. They're like, back and talking about the idea, is Batman a robot, or is he actually the Batman? Did you notice that in the song it says robot? Robot? Eric, of course, like they heard it. That the only problem is I ended up, I was really stuck, and I ended up having it twice, and it, I didn't like doing robot twice. But it was okay. Almost did it three times. Earlier, I called him Machine Batman to avoid it. <laughs> ah, but you go and you start this off. And, yeah, you have uh, Captio. He's talking to Batman. He's explaining some things of how this all went down, how he ended up training and doing the stuff with Batman. But then oh, also going with Joker. And then saying there was a plan all along. That's where I call bullshit. And I call bullshit in a way where you're doing your run right now. You're not that many. I mean, there's some issues going on. But when Tom King ended up saying, oh, by the way, Bane was the guy behind everything Mastermind. all along. It was still kind of bullshit, but at least it was Bane. You know, at well, least it was thing. Bane. It, it was Bane. Tom King brought Bane in, just had him sitting around naked. He did Tom King things to Bane that we didn't like, but it was still there. When you have the idea of Dr. Capio, the smartest man in the world, that Chip Zdarsky actually created for his reimagining of the Batman origins and the people who trained him, the idea that you bring him in here, I swear something even changed because when you were doing like Capio back and he trained the Joker during Joker Year One, I swear that he had initially planned on killing Capio because that's how the book looked like it ending. Eventually, we bring him back the idea, oh no, he didn't die. Yeah, well, he didn't die. No, it's just that the joke has been keeping him in a freaking, like, a, a pretty much a cage for 20 years, just feeding him when, when he gets back around to it. But the idea that everything that we have ever done of any kind of significance in the modern age of Batman comics, Chips and Darcy says, no, that was the, that was my Capio. That was my character that I created, like, you know, recently. Everything, any motivation that the Joker has ever had has always been about bringing out Zernar with Capio's training and stuff like that. I'm like, you, you egomaniac. How did you go on you to actually come out of nowhere and say this? Cause we talk about it all the time where a Jeff Johns will go around and like he'll retcon things and he'll say, you know, this is why this actually happened in a way that it doesn't make anybody else look worse in the long run. This is just making everybody else who's faced Batman, even the Penguin, even the Joker's motivations. It is making them look worse to try to elevate Capio to be the big bad of Chips and Dusky's story. And it, it comes off so forced and it makes everything less around it. And like you said, in a run where he has been pretty much homaging Grant Morrison, even Scott Snyder at points to then say, oh, by the way, those guys were cool. 
Look at me. Look at me. With the, and what I got out of this is, and again, me and you are not the biggest Tom King fans. And some no. people are probably laughing that I just said it that way. But when you end up having the idea where I would say to somebody, just, you know, somebody perusing the comic shop. Oh, I heard Tom King did something. What's going on? Oh, get this. The Batman story that he's been doing. It's been all along the diabolical plan of Bane. A person might say, oh, oh, this, you know, that's cool. This is a Mark Shaw moment. And, and yeah. it's it's a forced in. It's even less than Mark Shaw because at least Mark Shaw had been around. Well, and also, though, Mark Shaw, you needed to have it be somebody. And you, and we're talking about event Leviathan and Leviathan yeah. in general, where you ended up having Brian Michael Bendis. Hey, everybody. And really doing that mystery box. Boom. But, oh, Mark Shaw and every who? This in this is so like just imagine hey i heard something big happen in batman what was it oh you didn't hear that everything that's happened in batman's life has pretty much been the plan of of captio they'd be like what did you just call me they wouldn't even know that i actually (laughs) said a character that's how bad it is and in the whole play of it's trying to it's trying to pull together and uh, this mess it's but some of the things he didn't need. That's where we go nuts sometimes, where the idea of, oh, my God, is anybody at this point still bitching, saying, I don't really think that the penguin was really dead. And he said, like, we go back to that and take time to say, oh, well, the penguin was a schmuck. He's an idiot. And so the Joker ended up being able to convince him. But all of this going from, oh, I was I was waiting for Alfred to die, right? In the, the initial story that Chips and Dusty did for the backups of Batman when he got on with the idea where, like, you know, Penguin wanted – actually, it was probably in the front-ups as well, but the idea that the Penguin wanted to fake his death to make it look like Batman did it so he could actually go off and become his own man outside of, like, uh, Oz, like uh, you know, Penguin stuff and go to – like, and be Paul Meredith in Metropolis. Paul Meredith. He's done with it. I'm like, that was just a cool we loved story it. To ha- and be able to have the last laugh of a Batman who everybody would think that he killed the Penguin. That's great. Now in this issue, it's like, oh no, that was Cappy was doing and the Joker's the one who provided him the pill that'll make it look like he died and because the Penguin, he's not smart enough to do this on his own. I'm like, you stupid sons of bitches. The goddamn Penguin, if he, he can do this, you know what you do? He'd hire a goddamn scientist to do it. You can't, don't have to make the Penguin look worse in order to freaking say that the Joker and Cappy are the bees, goddamn bees. Even going back to say, you know what? That death of uh, Jason Todd and when like the Joker shot Barbara Gordon, all because he wanted to bring out Zeranar because Capio like trained him. I'm like fuck you. Is that it? Yeah. No. Yeah. It, it's bullshit. And so when you're doing this, even the idea if I sat there, me and you started talking about because we love Paul Meredith. But if we sat there and said, and even the idea of Paul Meredith is it, isn't even Paul Meredith anymore with Tom King's The Penguin book because they took the idea of the story and changed it completely for that book. So now you have the Tom King book where he's coming back and he's, oh, my God, everybody's afraid of him, whatever. He's lessened The Penguin. Tom King's elevating a character more than you are. That's crazy. And so if in my mind, I sat there and thought about the Paul Meredith stuff. I mean, just let it lie that some people can think, oh, he just wanted to get away. And at the last second, he wanted to screw Batman going. That's cool. That's a penguin move. Now you change it. You make it so ridiculously dumb to say, and even the explanation of him, right? The penguin was never one of your top shelf rogues. I'm like, bullshit. He's top four in every goddamn idea that anybody has. Yeah. Just because he's not somebody maybe that Chips Darsky, that's bullshit. It's bullshit. And it ruins what I thought he did a good job with and even did more of a a better job when it was Catwoman in the backups going to try to find you know, his kids uh, yeah. and things like that. Those were really good. But yet he just says here, yeah, he's a dummy. And even the way, and he certainly didn't have the chemistry brain. I, I wonder if I have the chemistry brain. Eric, but, so all of this. This and is your brain on chemistry. This is Chip Zdarsky trying to do, and I'm not going to get in a fight with anybody about who the best writer is of all time or whatever. Because one of the things, though, even if you don't like Jeff Johns, you have to admit, you already said it. One of the things he's really good at is going back and looking at other things, not changing things in a grand scale, but finding some little clever little crack where he could say, oh, by the way, this is that sometimes yeah. with names and things. like, And it works most of the time. Not everything yeah. works, but it works most of the time in a clever way to go, OK, that's cool. But never in my mind, what we read never ends up at the point where it makes that first thing you said it bad. 
it doesn't diminish things. It ends up making something cool in the present that then connects it to a past continuity. Elevate it's your cool. own character on your own. Don't diminish other characters to make your character look better. Yeah. So when we had all this, and even when they had the Joker Year One, I did a video. We talked about it on this podcast. The idea that I said, I don't love the concept of this because I do think that it's going to be Chip Zdarsky trying to nail in his Batman the Night continuity into it even more. And that's what it, it was worse than I even imagined when yeah. you get Captio. And it's such a, yeah, like, it's just, how can anybody read it and not roll their eyes when you're talking about the idea of Alfred being killed by Bane? Ooh, that was what Captio was waiting for. Well, even the idea, when we have the explanation where this is Captio's grand plan for like, oh, let's say 20 years and stuff like that. But like the Joker, he's waiting for time. So let's say around Batman Endgame era of, you know, New 52, when he makes his way into the Batcave. And then he just stumbles across a failsafe robot, which was a mystery to Bruce as well, because, you know, the Batman of Zero Nark had his own bad case separate than Bruce's that Bruce didn't know about. So when he's like, oh, no, the Joker just saw that, too. And even the idea where it's like, and then Capio gave, you know, Joker a phrase, the freaking pretty much Manchurian candidate Bruce Wayne. So he would turn into Zero Nark, and then Zero Nark would go and check on him. So I think, like, they would have this weird pack, and it's all this weirdness that feels like it comes out of nowhere here to make this current story try to make sense. Yeah, and I would have rather have had where he gave this Manchurian candidate sleeper cell type deal, that that would be the thing that really activates Zero Nark itself. Not Zero Nark... Pretty much what it gets to when it is that phrase, it reminds me of Tom King again of, I was punching you and telling you things. <laughs> this is just this phrase that, oh, I must go check on Cap Dio. And then we go, but nothing in this is where you say to yourself, oh, shit. Remember, Eric, when Joker went down during Endgame and he disappeared down this hallway and then came back and said, there's nothing like this. This is just yeah. made up shit. This is, again, this is classic retcon. In a way that is just forced as shit And it just, it's annoying Because like you said, by the end The big thing is You, you, the gall of you You (laughs) son of a bitch Like the idea that you are doing this You're already writing Batman You know, biggest book, one of the biggest If you're a Spider-Man fan Batman and the Joker Yeah, you're writing, yeah And you're doing it and you're just making it So you have your dick prints on it That's all you're doing And leading up to this, you did not earn any of this because the story has been a convoluted bunch of bullshit and you're trying to tie it in together while also making your story the most important story ever written and it's not it, it is not and it's and pretty even when bad. we get to the main story where apparently since batman has become zuran our failsafe robot man he has a uh, a place underneath Blackgate Prison. It's still at Blackgate. It's underneath it. It's a whole prison thing where he's taking everybody and pretty much just imprisoning them without due process at all. And the city, they're like, man, maybe Batman should be good, but the city isn't doing anything about it. They know all about it, but if for some reason there's no steps being taken to stop this vigilante from just locking people up in a freaking secret prison. That I say secret. It's just it's outside the normal prison, and everybody's just okay with it. And, and it's yeah, they we've know come about from it. <laughs> anti mask kind of like a, a thing that we've been going with, like through Gotham City, where people aren't trusting the vigilantes as much. Obviously, they're out and about, but this just seems like an idea. Is like, all right, I don't want to deal with that. So we're just going to talk about it very briefly and move on. Well, and where I can tell that he really doesn't want to talk about it, but before that, I need to have a scene in one of these Batman books where there's a couple or two buddies. Make it me and you. And we're meeting up, and he's like, oh, man, what's going on now? And you say, oh, my God, there's a robot Batman. I'm like, yeah, it must be Tuesday in Gotham, because this shit always happens. But when he does this, I thought, and you kind of get it, but not fully. You're getting it more in the Ram V deal. I thought it was going to be. Oh, my God, I still think we might get there. Oh, my God, this robot Batman, I don't quite understand it, but, man, he's really cleaning up the streets. He's doing great. But in this, Chip Starsky won't even do it. He doesn't want to deal with it so much. That Damien hears a news report that basically says, oh, get this. We just did a poll. 50% like the robot Batman. Everybody's always divided. Yeah, it's just the idea that some people like it, some people don't. That's the easiest way to just push it aside. And I know that people will then say, just like with the politics nowadays. Oh, my goodness. But that's just a lame way to say we're not going to deal with that. But you can't do that with the Bat family. And you have these weird scenes that end up being nothing. And it's really to show Damien has been fully under the thrall of this robot Batman, but not enough. And this is the thing to me where we talk about Captio and bullshit. What are you doing? I think it's yet another 
writer who does not care about Damien and thinks that Damien's a big dummy. Now, if well, you're going to play an emotional of... level of it, that he just wants to then do that, and I might be behind it, but just he is weird. He's, he's with Batman 100%, whether he, like, you know, he wants this to be Batman more than actually, like, you know, has sussed out the idea that this is actually Batman. And even the idea that you have this, though, the secret prison that he's keeping all these people without due process in, it just makes Damien, when he had this thing going on, make him look right because people are okay with it for the most part and the city is allowing him to do this and the weird thing again they seem to know this but then chip Sadarsky doesn't go fully that way because he actually has like barbara when she's telling the tale of batman it's like oh man like the idea he's keeping people in a secret prison under blackgate just stop there that's yeah. fine but but then she goes he thinks he's a cop and then setting up trials from months later. I'm like, what is he doing with trials? <laughs> like, what do you think? And the idea that she says, oh, my God, because you'll, you know, because Batman set up the trials. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and also the idea that does Chip Zdarsky think that most of the time, like, oh, my God, you were you were committing murder trial tomorrow. That <laughs> there are things that people are shocked by the idea that trials happen three years later. Yeah. The, the idea of man, the trials aren't even for months. I'm like, really? But, and and he's having a is, trial. I mean, that's, that's outside so of all of that, where the Bat family are, are besides for Stephanie Brown, apparently, who's the only like level headed person. But what here, does she do? She just pretty much says, you know, that's not fucking Batman, Damien. Yeah, that's so weird. But then she doesn't do anything about What's it. What's she going to do? It's a robot Batman. She's Stephanie Brown. You, you start to fight, Eric. But again, she's only there just to show it's, she's a device to show that Damien's down with it. But again, me and you talked about this, and I even said at one point where Zornar, I never put into the equation, is the robot. I'll use my wife's phrase that she yelled at me because I used it, I think, last night. The, I didn't have the fail-safe Batman robot on my bingo card here. But the idea of Zornar, Batman, I did think, oh, my God, Damien's going to like that. He has yeah. with points, right? You have that thing going on. But when I was thinking more about it, I think that Damien, who is so over the top, and he did have his own prison, I think he's the first one who would recognize that this isn't my father. Not even just because he's his son, but because Batman has been preaching Adam the exact opposite. Now, all of a sudden, he's a robot doing this, and it's, uh, oh, Damien loves it. I'd rather well, have that personal is, deal. I agree. You need that personal deal, especially in a world where you have a Batman and Robin book for, like, you know, Bruce and Damien are spending more time than they have together in years. And even them talking about the idea, I think we work better as Batman and Robin than father and son. Yeah, it's a problem that we have right now. But the, the fact that he wants this and believes it's better, he should see this and know this isn't right because this is never what my father would want because That's of what, what I'm he's saying. been trying so hard to do all this, all this time now. Damien is over the top. He might want it, but he knows this is not That's right. That's exactly. He, and he knows that Batman doesn't want that, and that's what keeps him. This is the idea, if you were going to really expand this and maybe get some of those you know, layers, that you'd see Damien starting to be really, really bad here because he always did have Batman to tell him, to, and not even tell him. He, Batman is the symbol of, that's why I'm not going to go over there. <laughs> yes, but the idea that, and now with the robot, Batman has something, but if you don't end this, because how do you get out of this with Damien, once again, just being completely ridiculous and if it doesn't end where Dick Grayson comes up and says, Damien, why, did, why didn't you do anything? Why didn't? And he says, I kind of knew it wasn't Batman, but he was paying attention to me. I get the, I'll start crying. If he, oh like, that's what I need. I need something where he says, I just had a hope because he was being nice to me or he's paying attention. And that would be nice. But I just think they're using the idea. If it wasn't Damien, it'd be Jason Todd. I mean, th those are the two. That it would be like, oh, but, you know, you have Damien here because it's cloaked with the sun and stuff like that and have Batman and Robin with the, the robot or bit. But it, it just makes Damien look bad again. And you're going back to almost the kind of feel that we had with Gotham War again with yeah. taking sides, doing this. And at least this where you have Zoran R. And you have to remember, and they mentioned it in this, but people seem to forget, like, Zoran R., he's going to be over the top. He's not going to kill. He doesn't like guns. Like, nope. it is the what should be the, you know, a Batman. Batman. Yeah. So, yeah, that he's not going to go fully crazy, but it's not Batman. He's doing all these things and just, I'm well, telling you. Is, let's, let's put aside, let's just say that the entire Bat family, besides for Stephanie Brown, they're all taking stupid pills right now. And for some reason, let's just say this has been forced upon. They're not thinking clearly here. So let's bring in the Justice League. <laughs> oh, wait, we talked to the Justice League here where Wonder Woman and Flash oh are like, man, God. it sounds like Batman. He's just doing what he's always wanted to do for years. I'm like, 
None of you people know Batman at all. I don't know even know why you talk to him at this point. If you're just gonna laugh, not even the idea that you know, like, know Batman, you're friends with Batman. You hear about this, you're the, you were the Just League, even though we're living in a world where there is no Just League right now. You come in and you stop him because he's off his goddamn rocker and just goes against everything that you believe in as well. Mom, I'm reading it and they're and they say, So what do you think? And <laughs> Flash. I, I wish Barry's like, well, you know, I don't really know the guy. <laughs> he's got but he's like, hey, right now he's more of Batman, right? And the, that's the thing, though. Dick Grayson and Barbara, I blame them as well. So they should say, Stupid no, pills. no, no, that's the problem. <laughs> so then you have Wonder Woman and says, it appears that he's doing things he's wanted to for years, accelerating his war on crime by arresting more criminals. Somebody has to say, oh, you're the bitch who was tr- going to try to send him back in time to see his parents die for a birthday. Yeah, you don't know them. Get out of town. Like, it, nobody knows these characters anymore. Space nobody mom. knows the connections. With them. Yeah, just say, oh, you mean when the U.S. was pretty much going to start World War Three against you and you went to fucking Space Mall? Get out of town. Why did they call them? I'm telling you, <laughs> lose their number. You don't need to talk to the Just League. They're not the Just League right now because they're idiots as well. Like the idea where also you should just point out, oh, by the way, Sanctuary, you two on the top should be in jail with my you know, father. Get out of here. They're all it's a ridiculous. weird thing, too, because the way we're going to be able to get Batman out of Black Gate Prison here is he thinks to himself after this meeting with Capio about what he's been going through this entire time, what Capio has been doing in the background this whole time. And if he sits down and he meditates, he knows that with Zuranar being in the back of his mind for all of this time, that Zuranar knows everything that he knows. So if he concentrates real hard, even though that Zuranar has separated his personality to a robot now, he can know everything that Zuranar wants to do when they occupy the same body. And I'm thinking to myself, you knew Zuranar was there. You knew that Zuranar has occupied your body. Why haven't you done this every time that Zuranar has come out to make sure that you haven't done any crazy shit? Yeah, yeah, really. I'm, I'm still caught up. But here's Barbara. Now, this is the play where she's, you know, she's really thinking because she's chewing on her glasses. She's there, and, and this is going to prove, like, she has to point out how bad things are getting, how over the top this robot Batman is and says, He's booking them all and entering them into the system. Oh, so he's following the world. Along with evidence. Uh, oh, so he's got the evidence. As if he's a cop. Okay. Yeah. He sets up a date for months from now for a trial. How, how is he's Eddie doing nothing this? different. And, and he, the thing is, you're trying, Chip Sadarsky's trying to make this play of he's so bad. He really is just being a cop, which he, he shouldn't be able to. No, and the cops should not allow this to happen. And this should be, and that's a, since Gotham War, I think, though, they left. They, they don't get paid enough. They've gone. And so you have basically what this should be. We don't know what's going on. He has a secret prison that's so secret. Everybody knows about it, but we don't know what's happening there. And he's trying to be judge, jury, and executioner. We're afraid he might go too far. All this stuff, but no, she's like, get this, he's arresting guys, he's entering them into the system properly with evidence, and then he's gonna set up a trial for him. I'm like, somebody should be there like somebody should be like, Oh god. <laughs> like that's really the problem is is that he wants to be more legit. Then says the mayor wants him stopped. Commissioner Montoya is just observing right now, just like you assholes are. They are there. Barbara's there, and she's the whole scene. She's chewing and on the damn glasses. Of this, it's because of this that um, Renee Montoya is going to get ousted as commissioner, and freaking somehow Vandal Savage is going to take control because she's just she's just observing right now. Speaking of observing, doesn't make sense for her to just observe either. They know where he is. He's under black ink. Get it. just shut that down. So he ends up where Nightwing and Barbara. And my joke is they've done nothing, and they're all out of ideas. They're sitting there together, and it's like, here's my act. Hey, hey, Barbara. Uh. You think that that robot's Batman? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> they right. call the Justice League. What, what do you think, Justice League? Oh, you mean the, the people, like you said, that should already be swooping in and stopping this? Oh, they think everything's fine. They think he's just being Batman. Oh, you know Batman. No, no, no. This is also the idea, Flash and Wonder Woman, because at least Superman shows up, that they're kind of telling you that Batman died and he had to up load his consciousness into a robot sometimes that and, is better and they don't care they don't even mention the idea of oh god we gotta go at least talk to him that's all i think that's all barbara and not and dick grayson want please go talk to him and see if you think he's on the up and up but they're like sounds good to me i'm busy and then wonder woman's like i really have to get back to this war with the sovereign i mean i ended up you know helping some kids i went to space mall people are really getting angry at me i can't go to gotham i'm at that way but it's just ridiculous. And when Chip Zdarsky's trying to pull it all together with this Capio, 
The shit that's not being pulled together is the actual story itself, and it just falls apart. There's nothing really going on except people sitting around wondering if it's Batman while he's just grabbing people and throwing them under Blackie. That's it. So we then have Batman. Now, I do like the way that this plays out, and I'll give them credit if it is, where Joker's telling him a little limerick. And then the narration is, I got to get the fuck out of here. Like, I get the idea. <laughs> Batman has no concern with anybody else. He's like, he's just like, I, I hate this place. I could need to leave right now. You had to giggle at that, right? When oh, he's yeah. doing that, he's like, I need to get out of here. Uh, it's kind of a funny limbo. I, I thought it was funny. And there's Joker with that stupid brace on. Like, Joker's actually okay. But there's Batman. And like you said, now we're going to throw in, well, since Zoranar knew everything I did, which will play out with Superman. I know everything he did. If I meditate and think of the mind movies, you should go into the compartmentalized brain deal and have them like, you know, like we say, when you do 80s hacking, I need to see Batman like punching walls down in his brain to go there. But he ends up figuring out what happened and what Zoran Arn might do. But that's just I'm going to get out of here. Get out of here. In my sexy half uniform that looks like. Well, Punchline is brought in and all happy to see the Joker who plays up that he's been missing her this entire time. But ultimately, it's just like, I'm going to fight some fail-safe robot guards that are in here. I can do that because, you know, Zernar built them. I built them. I know how to disable them. So I can do all this with release all the prisoners and hope to God that they don't want to attack me because that's going to end up badly. Well, Batman, uh, fail-safe, and Robin, Damian Wayne are going after Harley Quinn, which is actually the most interesting part of the book in my mind because it's Harley Quinn, for the most part, who has been, you know, for a time, a part of the Bat family, it seemed like, for she how often she would show up. was part up. of a Justice League, which exactly. is a good joke. That's a good joke. And but I like, think this just is him so trying weird. to get people on board, the people who complain about it and stuff, but it's okay. But I just wish that, like, Damien seems so wholeheartedly into the idea of taking down Harley Quinn, who has been a hero of Gotham for a while now. Yeah, she's on probation and is forced to teach in her own book, if that's still a thing. Who knows, because nobody reads that book. But it just seems like an idea that he would not be okay with this because of how close Harley Quinn has gotten to the Bat family and how much she's kept her nose clean. But I even understand the idea of the Batman of Zaranar failsafe that we have here, because he's like, you think I would have let you get away with all the people that you helped the Joker kill for all of those years, and you just get to scot free? No, sir. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of which, the probation of the college professor slash on the Suicide Squad as well, uh, with Dreamer. Uh, but yeah, so all this going down, they, they ended up uh, tranking Bud and Lou. I actually thought they were dead at first. I was like, okay, holy shit. I'm telling you, you say trank. They just look like just arrows, like like crossbow bolts in the freaking Bud and Lou. What I, th- what I thought you were going to say is if people don't know that there's no way that Damien would have done this. If, if it would be like something hurting him, he's a big animal guy. So even though that's just a nitpick, but still, I liked it. Like this scene, I like Damien like stepping up and he wants to be the big boy. And he's yelling at her and the He wants to be the big boy. He does want to be the big boy because oh my god, bats and Robin Clown. <laughs> I thought it was funny. He's in the back yelling. But what I wanted from this, and you kinda get it, I think it's a little less played out. Damien really does give the side eye, he's giving the stink eye to the Batman robot because yes. it when when he grabs Harley by the neck. This is where I, I need I this to get play that out idea. a lot more than what we had for the rest of the issue because this feels like it's the actual parts that anybody would care about with Damien realizing maybe things aren't right, even though I want them to be right. And I think it should have been, I, I think it's a little too subtle. You see it, but I, I want it to be a little more, maybe even Damien like stopping him a bit. Uh, it's going to get to a point where Damien's going to try to stop, you know, the Zoran R failsafe Batman robot. And it might get the backhand. And, the, and of course, it's Chip Zdarsky. He's a funny guy. You'll do the meme deal where he gets the backhand. Uh, but in all of that, or or just that Bruce Wayne will break out and find his son. But <laughs> you end up where even that, you have Batman in the prison. You're going to have to figure out a way. I think that Chip Zdarsky realized that he set up, you know, a uh, a mystery room that he can't escape from an escape room because he's in a prison. A mystery room. A mystery room. I couldn't remember (laughs) what. And then I say escape, an escape room because you have this, you have all these stuff. So he has to play. Okay. He thinks back at the sword, our memories. Ooh, there's a switch off, you know, a kill switch underneath the thing. Also, thank God that all the prisoners that I'm with, they're not powered up. They're the double. It it just ends up where it's very convenient at that point for them to go. Punchline comes in, she's yelling her things. I did laugh when Joker's like, and again, some of these things could have been played up even better for humor. The idea of, oh, Punchline, I was just thinking of you. She should slap him right in the face, uh, but she looks good. 
comes in. It was neat to see her. I know I love Punchline. I said that I'd heard she was going to be in, and she just Phase ends up. Four. She just right away just pulls the, the lever and the gates, the prisons open, and everybody comes out. You have just you know lower level thugs that Batman's going to try to beat up. Vandal Savage is there. You end up having these fail safe robots without feet. They come rocketing in, and Batman is able to shut them down. And he goes to leave. He has to get out into Gotham, and he gets stopped by this police officer. Like well, not even police officer. Yeah, guard. Who says, listen, there's still a prison here. I, I still have to work. I got bills to pay. You ain't paying shit. You got no money, Batman. And he says, do you know who I am? I'm like, I think so. Like, he should be sword fighting Rachel Ghoul right now with that bare chest, but he's there. And the, the weird thing is, I was really sad that this guy ends up dead. His Vandal Savage looks like he just kills him. He may survive somehow, but it looks like he's dead. But we go then to Damien, and Damien is snooping around now. He's kind of figuring out, well, let's see what's going on. And oh he my ends God, up finding a three point yeah. robot. How many things can you throw at us in this thing? That's just and like that's the uh, things. You, you have Harley Quinn. You have the you have the Justice League on monitors, but still the Justice League for the most part showing up. Punchline showed up. That's huge too. But just like. With all the questions that everybody has about whether or not this is Batman, Batman's acting right, when you involve Batman creating an Amazo army to take over the city, you know shit's done gone sideways. Yeah, <laughs> it has. Now, I'll ask you one thing I didn't even think of. Uh, you know, you have when Punchline shows up, well, where where's Harley? And in, in that, it looks like, like the riot is starting when they have, like, there's a weird mis- like, like he's grabbing Harley, he should be taking her. Would have been funny to have Punchline and Harley well, wasn't, in a wasn't cell the thing together. Where, like Punchline was brought into the prison, and then they went after Harley Quinn. And that's what I'm saying. But when they're going to get Harley, this this riot seems to happen. But they never like they, he would be going off to Blackgate right now to drop her off while this you. happens. He he still has to book her. <laughs> oh, he's he's collecting evidence. Yeah, <laughs> it's what he's doing. That'd be funny. It's so ridiculous that he's like, hey. My helpers, did you find it? It's Wonder Woman and Barry Allen. I'm over here getting fingerprints, Robot Batman. You're right on. Like, what did they do? But you have that. It would be Hell, cool. I even feel bad for Killer Croc in this because, yeah, he slips up now and again. But I still like to think that he's, you know, on the up and up anymore for what he's been up to. Yeah, when you see him in Poison Ivy, he's like kind of laying low. But for the most part, for a couple of years, you really did see him like Waylon Jones was trying to keep his nose clean and like live a proper life. Speaking of which, I was on uh, doing a podcast with Zach. We were doing the year one. And in the year one Nightwing story, at near the end, Killer Croc shows up. He ends up getting an Alfred that is disguised as Two Face. That's pretty good. But we started talking, and uh, Zach actually asked me about your article about the whitewashing of the DCU, and we ended up looking oh, really? that up and checking it out. Yeah, it was real weird synergy. But uh, yeah, so Killer Croc. Also, I wanted to have a little bit where if Chip Starsky is going to do stuff, maybe even go with the idea where there is somebody. I don't know, not Killer Croc, because we talk about it all the time. Who should be in Arkham? Who should be in Blackgate? Maybe get somebody that usually is in Arkham. And like, what are you doing? I'm supposed to be in Arkham. It's like, that That fun time is over, dude. And maybe have Zor and our Batman say, you're all going to Blackgate. I don't give a crap about that. But in this, Chip Starsky still has to play this idea. And I think it is with uh, Captio says, you know, the Sornar still wants to, you know, fix the peoples. He's, uh, even, he's just... even the idea, though, that like everybody, even the media knows that Captio is the warden of the underground black. And I'm like, why, why are people just OK with it? He's just some guy that you don't know anything about. Maybe, yeah, maybe you even know he's a smart guy from around the world, but just throwing in all oh, more now. But I'm just going to start walking in the places and uh, announce myself as something and expect people to be OK with it. Unless you're in Gotham. I'm telling Gotham has we we talk about the bullshit that goes on and and Ram V's and Ram V's. Of, but at least I can say the motherfucker's got a thalamus engine. Yeah, what do we got thalamus here? Thalamus engine. I, I'm I'm telling you that a city now the thalamus engine wasn't well it was it was activated a little but the idea that our country is good with the idea of a foreign bunch of dignitaries demanding a hanging in the middle of a major city I don't think that works. In this I'm sitting there thinking and when you make the joke of hey huh huh. How Clark Kent get that job? He ain't got no records so of this security or that. Number? Yeah. I'm sitting here. I'm like, how are they letting Vandal Savage? <laughs> the only thing on record is bad with him, and now he's police commissioner Captio, who just showed up. Now with that, well, Vandal Savage, he's just a businessman. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, yeah. I'm telling you, here's my thing. Captio's like, hey, I want to apply to be the warden. They're like, do you have any references? All he has is Chip Starsky says I'm great. That's the <laughs> reference. He's in. 
that, that people know, like the idea that they know of this underneath prison with Captio. It's ridiculous. What is Captio? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll give one thing though. Nakano at least says something that makes a little bit of sense where he says, get the military in here. Nobody, maybe it's his assistants. Nobody listens. I actually <laughs> thought it was going to go as far as somebody says. He's got an eye for detail. I, I that that, yeah, he does. He's got 20 vision. You end up where I thought the play would be somebody get in the National Guard and there was going to be some whack ass thing, whack ass there, where they go, oh, don't you remember that law that they passed that no military can ever enter Gotham because shit happened? It, it's ridiculous that the city isn't shut down. Every single day, e- but everybody's still playing on no man's land rules. Yeah, that, that's what I I was thinking of that too. Like, how is this? Are they just shutting the shit down all the time? It is just the button. They're like they have a separate thing. Oh, Mr. President, Gotham's acting up again. Oh shit! Get that brown bug. Boom! Shut it down. Uh, but all of this, where Bruce has escaped, he ends up escaping. That poor guard seems to be slashed, sliced, and diced by Vandal, and then you have Nakano. Screaming and yelling, oh, my God, get into this. And the the prison's commandeered. He knows this. He's yelling this. But then they say, there's this guy. His name's Savage. He wants asylum. But he also seems to want to be commissioner because that was promised to him. And then Nakano freaks out. It's happening already to tie into the organ. That doesn't make sense either. None of this well, it's happening sense. already, but maybe the stuff in the background with the backups of Vandal Savage we had with that mysterious elite, you know, founding families of Gotham, stuff like that, who want to appoint Vandal into this position. But just the idea where Bat, where Batman already knows the, the like, uh, Zur and R Batman while he's talking to Superman, it's Vandal Savage. He's on the verge of being anointed police commissioner by people in the shadows. This is Gotham City, Clark. There's no other city like it. You just arrested this guy and threw him in a deep, dark dungeon. Like, Batman, I, I sure not, Batman better that. be really pissed off about this and go and do I, something, I, right? It like, doesn't is, make I sense. Can, I, I can kind of get the idea of some shadowy rich people that can, like, you know, have power to pull strings within the, like, inner government of Gotham that can appoint Vandal Savage. It's just such a weird idea that he was, like, you know, where he is, where Batman knows all of this already. You know, it's a, it feels like something we should be working towards, and especially the idea because right now, because ever since Gotham War, the way Vandal Savage's powers work out, he can't leave the Gotham City limits. You know, yeah, for they don't reason. even mention that, and even if they go with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need him true. here doing something, and Commissioner seems like a really cool thing for him to do. Just the way we're setting it up, though, with him just, like, you know, being locked in a deep, dark dungeon for no reason, even though Batman and Zoran is doing, like, due process, it just feels like a weird idea that we're just being thrown around here. Here's the weird ideas all involved. You end up where Vandal Savage, he gets meteorite powers. Oh, man, I'm back, baby. Oh, I can't leave Gotham limits, city limits. So he ends up where, oh, no, he took over the mansion. But that that's not going to work with the Zornar Batman deal because he, oh, so he arrests him there. But at that point, he was already told he was going to be commissioner. They actually already mentioned this, that, hey, we're going to make you commissioner. He's like, oh, that's cool. Then suddenly that got wiped out because he got put into prison. To now have that come back because now you have established and in this, that's why if you if you go and I forget what he calls it, Batman says to Damon, "Oh, you like our little bat coops? We're hanging out that to tell you they're not in the bat cave anymore." Yeah. So Vandal Savage can be fun. It, it was like a little bit of a pause to the story in the, such a fucked up way that you didn't need it. You could have had Vandal Savage just in the mansion and have the idea of, "Hey, we're going to put you be commissioner," and now he moves into. I, did the police commissioners get mansions? They should, Eric, but they don't. Yeah. But have them like, we're going to move you closer to that, something. But it's just that roundabout way. And like you said, he arrested him. There's no way that a Zoran or Batman should be down with this. Then you go with the idea that Ram V's deal is supposed to happen six months later, where Renee Montoya is still the commissioner. So what do they just say? Are bad? And then she comes back. It's, it's, I don't think that you have to have it connect. Because they're different books, but they should, because you're even mentioning stuff in here. They should here. have left Vandal Savage out of here, especially if you're going to talk about the idea of Zoranar doing due process and gathering evidence. Because as far as anybody knows, including like what Batman can prove, Vandal Savage is innocent. Yeah. My, my whole thing in it, though, is that you could have just had Zoranar Batman go in and say to Vandal Savage, yeah, this is my... And then somebody's like, what the hell do I care? You just, you owe yeah, me just one. Have a, have a big dick contest. Yeah, you owe me one. You, you have the cave, whatever. Just do your things. He probably... He, he left it anyway. Like when, when you show Vandal Savage showing up with a blanket wrapped around him on a press conference where he's seeking asylum from the Batman, you're making him look like a bitch. He, he yeah, should look be a at big him. imposing threat for Batman. I think he's where got he a can, hoodie on. He doesn't <laughs> even care about the Batman of Zoranar because he's Vandal fucking Savage. Yeah, yeah. And, and 
put the best as somebody in the thing. Mr. Savage, why don't you just leave Gotham? And he's like, yeah, I wish I could. Why don't you shut your mouth and much business? And uh, you have all that going down. And like you said, there, there's Nakano. And I think you're supposed to even go with the shadowy figures that we saw the rich. But that probably is supposed to connect to the organs. Because when he's like, it's happening already. And he's all upset. Well, what do you care? Like, everything goes wrong with you, Nakano. Get out of here. Like, this guy is, we really say, the only reason he's West still Nakano. mayor is, yeah, really, is because he just lets shit go and these powers that be are just, you know, paying him off and doing all that stuff. But he, he's a wreck. Politics. Yeah, yeah. So then you have Superman go to talk to the robot Batman. At least he's going to do something. But he goes in and says. Is he, is he really? Well, he goes in and says, hey, uh, let's play 20 questions there, robot. When did or we one meet? Question. Yeah, when did we meet? Phantom Zone case. That sounds good to me. All right. I like the idea that he's just like on the phone. He walks the walk and he talks the talk. Like everything's good with me. The whole thing of this was where it was pointed out to the Justice League. Even what do we do if this? Even if it is Bruce, what do, what do you do to stop him if he goes too far? You know that whole contingency thing. But thrown it back the Justice like, League, and and you end up where they. Throw it. I think Nightwing was the one who said this. Superman, he already beat you as the the failsafe robot alone. Now it's a Batman failsafe robot. Do you have? An, Superman goes in to try to like. Okay, I want to see if this is on the up and up. Hey, where we where we meet? What we do? Oh, it was the Phantom Zone deal. We know as readers that see he World knows Finest. all of those. So it says see World Finest. So then you want to have you know, Zornar has been playing the game. At one point, he said to Stephanie Brown when she came, said, "I don't want to fight you guys again. That was wrong. I was wrong." I, I'm more sensitive robot Batman now. So then you have it where he's like really thinking on his feet here and says to to Superman, basically, get out of my town, bitch. And if you come back, I'll fucking kill you. That's how it ends. Why would he do that? I don't think it will be. But this Batman being one of the big comics of DC Comics, as it always should be, should lead to the idea what happens when Batman goes wrong. The idea of Batman's contingency plans. You have to reinstate the Justice League, put them back together because that's the only thing you have to really take a a Batman down. Yeah, that's going to happen, you know, this summer, it seems. So I'm saying, though, but this, like, this should be the thing that happens. It might be. This that might be this might be the setup of the absolute power, because if you saw any of the covers or whatever, you do have fail-safe robot, whether it's Zora Narfield, that's with Amanda Waller, and maybe yeah. that's why they have to, because who else could stop them but the combined power of... And it's again, it's one of those things where we keep... You have to keep saying there's no Justice League. But again, in this book, there is. They're just not doing... You know, they're, not getting, hanging. they're not hanging. They're not getting together for their weekly meetings. They don't got but their membership cards. They've certainly been called in. And, you know, you even have other people who are able to get into crazy bunkers and things like a Hollower Queen. And, you know, they're still there. It's ridiculous. But yeah, Batman says, if you, if you try to take me down, you will fail because Batman always wins and then leaves. And it says to be continued. So I didn't, I was going to mention at the beginning, this is an oversized issue. It doesn't have. The ba- I'm glad. I'm glad we got it. But what we got, though, just seems a, it's a weird bunch of bullshit to try to make things work that kind of could have worked anyway if you left them alone. But when you end up putting a light on it, makes it worse or just throwing things because you want to, you know, say you're the big cheese of the Batman deal. And it just didn't feel right. And the amount of people down Nothing on this book. Right. Yeah, the amount of people down on this book. Maybe this is Chip Zdarsky, like, throwing, you know, this lifesaver out there. I do mean the candy. The idea of, hey, everybody, look, this is big. Hey, everybody, you should read it. But the way that it plays out. Hey, everybody, Punchline Harley Quinn, you love that shit, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that what ends up happening here, the people who have stuck with it, there's going to be even more than saying, yeah, this is kind of bullshit. Like, I I just, I just, I want a story. Because it is. And. Some of this, if you think about like some big concepts of it, could work, but not this way. It, it just ends up always in its own way. And, and Chip Zdarsky trying to really push his own remade well, or even year one, it just throws it out. Well, like I say, the or addition of Captio to being the um, like the new big bad and stuff like that, who's been the mastermind behind everything. You've made everybody less to elevate that character. And even in the background here, you're like making the Bat family less to say the Zuranar failsafe thing that you put together. That's even better because you're not having anybody act against it. So everybody just looks like a bunch of big ass dummies. They're like, stop it. They look like, even if you would say, like, bring some things up or bring some things like that out of the past, like, the last time I thought that he was this or that, I was wrong. I don't. And also, where is all of a sudden, would it be cool? All of a sudden, 
where's Gordon been? All of a sudden he shows up in his rookie suit. He's like, if there's a robot Batman, it's me, asshole. And he starts fighting. That'd be cool. He don't got that no more. I think Luke Fox still has it. I'd love a joke in this where somebody, I'm telling you, the joke should just be like two random guys on the street that they keep showing up in weird spots. It's like, I thought we already had a robot Batman. That didn't work out the last hey, time. Joe Paul Valley, so he's building that, you know, as bat suit again, so he can show up. All that would make it bigger. I mean, I'm telling you, if all of a sudden you got Luke, he Brain grabs of a Batman. Luke starts making another robot Batman bunny suit for, for Gordon. And also, a in a funny way, get like a, a kind of a fat looking robot suit and bullocks and that is Robin. And he's like, I don't want to be Robin, but he's smoking a cigar still. Yeah, cool. I'm, not, I'm not buying that. He's got the it. hat. Wouldn't you like that? <laughs> Robot Batman Robin. Bullock would be funny. And even it? if you bring the rookie back, I'm not putting Jim Gordon in that thing. Well, you know, I, I like having him in there. He, The idea, though, that they meld it together, they're like, it's like a Jaeger. And he, they got the mind uh, melds, right? J- Jaeger. The Jaeger. Jaegers. I meant Mark Jaeger. So, wow. <laughs> he's got, uh, he's doing a piggyback ride. That'd be pretty funny, too. You know, Mark Jager's running around, and you end up having Gordon piggyback riding, yelling like chicken fights. Be pretty cool. Yeah. Also, press a button, get them damn buildings turning into the, the, the what's it called? What was it? The, the Gotham Knights? Was that what it was called? I, I don't remember from those Gotham Knights, because I think that's what Tim Drake was calling the Detective Comics team. Yeah. Yeah, remember what it was, though, and it'd be funny, because you just get a skyscraper, and then Tom Hanks walks by, he says he doesn't get it all works there. It's, it's great. I'd actually like it more than this, but what would you give this? Ultimately, I think the art is the strongest point about this because pretty much everywhere you take the story, it just it seems like something that's more and more wrong. I like the Harley Quinn bit just because you have Harley Quinn showing up for what she's done before in a weird and different way that could get Damien to start acting like Damien again. But that is the only thing I really enjoyed about the issue. So I'm giving it a four out of ten. Yeah, I think I'm a four out of ten as well. And, and I did like the art. The art's really good. Uh, but again, it's just like, you swipe the scene to scene to scene and, and none of them really hit. So by the end, I kind of end up thinking you like, it's almost like too much going on, but not enough at all happening. It, it's a very odd combo. It, it, everything feels forced to get to the next scene. Yeah. 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 That's the deal. So hopefully the big play will be Damien with the stink side eye and he ends up, you know, fiddling because now he sees a maze of robots and Batman says, we need an army. And even then he, he keeps giving that, that stink eye. <laughs> That I'm like, do more than that. Get a hold of somebody, start doing something. So at least he's on the case. Like he's a, because (laughs) Nightwing and Barbara should be ashamed of themselves. He's like, well, I'm going to do exactly what I did to to Heartless to take down this robot. Oh, what do you mean? I mean, nothing, nothing at all. I'm just going to sit here and let it roll. I'm going to let it roll. And he should let it go. Uh, Let it go. (laughs) It's a little song. Uh, But I'm a four. So let's go on to the next book. What is that, Eric? Neo Before Zod, number four, written by Joe Casey, with art by Dan McDade, David Baron, and Troy Pateri. And in this issue, guess what, everybody? Believe it or not, Earth is fucking dead. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. Like, like, I'm telling you, I was, it was like, you know, a double edged sword for me in the last issue. Like, I could see them doing this to be a big the wow moment. It's also Ursa. Like, that's such a weird thing because it's the only person you really have to hang around with Zod. And like, she's like, just so highly, like, tightly connected. The idea of killing her felt like something you shouldn't do, even though I think it would elevate the story by killing. So I was back and forth. So like, I didn't know where we would land. But the idea is she is dead here, and Zod is just going to do a proper Kryptonian like ceremony for a burial and stuff. Did you think she was going to rise out of it? No, I didn't. I, I'm telling you, when, when she's in her crystal freaking burial deal, I'm like, it's, it's it's time for her to be gone. It just seems weird that Ursa is dead. You say that, it's odd Ursa's dead, but boy, uh, give Joe Casey something because I did not expect pregnant Ursa to be dead. I agree. You know, that's the thing that threw me. I actually thought if you're going to kill Ursa, that it would be actually, now that I think of it, it would be funny in a R type of way where she's already given birth to a little baby son, and now all we're going to get is Zod trying to be, you know, Mr. Mom. And he's, it drives him nuts, but he's dead. I mean, that's crazy that the unborn baby and Ursa are dead. What's also crazy is this <laughs> this issue burns everything down. It, everything's sure gone. Everything that was set up now, whether or not we could get to whatever. But I think it feels weird. Usually we talk about the idea that three issues are usually, you know, you're usually three issues ahead at a point when you're writing a book. This is what we were told by most. And this is the fourth issue. And it really does feel like maybe something absolute power maybe something with the green lantern books and the, because it was zod knocking heads with the united planets that seems to be t- like without a planet now that's not gonna be i think maybe this is a course recorrect the deal 
And maybe they also said we went out alone. It's weird, though, because in this, like everything that was set up and all that is just kind of taken away. I mean, in ways that, well, I mean, the idea that the bottled city of Candor, that seemed to be one of the bigger things. He just sends it off like baby Superman. I don't know how he could even find it. He says, maybe one day I'll see you again. But I mean, he just sends it off. It's just gone. It's such a weird idea because you have the Bottle City of Candor being sent out into space. You have Eradicator as the program version of himself, pretty much, you know, in control of everything on the planet. Zod is like controlling through the Zod programming. Zod makes him simple Eradicator. That's just well, funny. he asked you for what is going to happen because for the Eradicator idea. wouldn't do it. He would say, you know, does not compute. I'm, I'm actually surprised that Eradicator didn't come out in Eradicator body and say, you are hurting the Kryptonian race and I cannot allow you to do this because you are one of the, with Ursa dead and unborn baby Zod over there. You are one of the only ones left. I need to preserve the Kryptonian so race. So you actually think he should have made it simple Eradicator before he sent the bottled city of Kendra yes. because he says, Omega Protocols, I'm going to make you dumb so that you listen to what I'm saying and you can end up pretty much. I mean, what do you think happens? The planet goes off to the Phantom Zone? The planet. It doesn't look like it blows up. No, it doesn't blow up. It, it, it teleports blinks out. like it blinks out to another destination in the universe. Yeah, it's a weird play because I I think it might just be Phantom Zone or something like that. But the, you even sit there and like, what about like we never really dealt much with the because even the, when people when, um, on the planet we never really dealt much with them and a lot ended no. up getting slaughtered. But still, it's, but like, it's such when, a weird play. When we're play. doing this, Eradicator is talking about the idea of accessing the magnetic poles would a- enable interstellar travel, and then like it just seems like the planet is going to be covered in this swarm to protect it. This like nanotechnology kind of thing, which looks like it actually goes over Earth's body, which may be a thing to bring her back later on. Maybe, I don't but know. like the, the planet just seems to leave. We don't know Zod's ultimate goal. We just know that we're setting the uh, bottle city of Candor away and we're moving the planet completely to some unknown origin not origin unknown destination and it's weird though because it doesn't like i wish that you could have spelled it out because you could have i mean i guess maybe it's supposed to be a surprise but it does look pretty bad but it's odd and I, maybe it's the other thing maybe and i don't know it, nobody really knows concrete sales but maybe people are oh man we want to kick ass Zod, and this is the way to get it because he's so pissed off but i we get the one thing that we had been enjoying where as this is going on, and he's pretty much like hitting every burn this shit to the ground switch that he has. Boom, 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 boom. Jarell comes and like, hey, asshole, looks like you messed up again. And you're all alone, jerk. And he flips out. And I, I love that, but it's only quick. Jarell of the mind is such a, an interesting idea that we had in the first issue where he's pretty much being haunted by some psychosis that he has. It's like, you know, b- b- been bothering him. But like, I wanted to know more because. Is this the thing that's allowing his family to think that you ain't General Zod and no more the way you used to be General Zod? Remember, they Zodin were because- saying that he wasn't. You're not right. You're, you're yeah. sick. You're not right. And they never really I, spelled I just it out. wanted more with the whole idea of the jor of the mind that's haunting him for everything that he's doing. That's the thing. And I, I would expect, obviously, it's of the mind. So it follows wherever. It's, it's not real. But I really wanted him to be just on this planet all alone and just have and realize that while he hates this jor of the mind. He's kind of lonely, so he'll discuss, but yell at it and become, it's almost like the odd couple. Type. We could still get it, but I thought we were going to get it on this planet. And when you have this idea of this mysterious WMD that he, you know, has to keep people from and whatnot, it does seem like maybe that's what blinked them out. I don't know. Maybe. We don't know because we don't know the idea but of that weapon that's the weird yet. thing is right now he's like, I want to burn everything down. You would think he'd use that weapon at least against this country. It's, it's a weird play to just wipe everything off the books and then add the thing because he goes off and he's like those cuns they're dead and that's that's this very sad and so he watches the planet blink out and i love it's a very cinematic deal where he's watching blinks out and then like turns at us i'm like i didn't do shit son like it wasn't me i'm not <laughs> a gun. Me. i'm not a con and he goes i love this con Close to you it, know though. commander like and they do remind me of klingons in this oh yeah especially. that's all they are in this so you end up where Zod comes and he starts just wrecking house. This this commander, the captain, the, the captain, captain, should we stop it? Nope, we're already dead. Captain, captain, should we get out of here? Nope, we're over. The guy said, it seems like a week goes by. Nope, we're already dead. No, we can't get out of here. It's so funny that every step of the way, he's just like, yeah, we're done. Don't do anything. And Zod we is just going up. crazy. And the worst part about it, when Zod does want to have answers about the idea of who sent them on this mission that ended up killing his unborn son and wife, we do find out that before the Sinister Sons happened, you know, when Lord Zod was in his crystal spaceship, just, you know, surfing the the, uh, the galaxy, he just, he, he got uh, he got taken by the cons and they're like, hey, look, 
If you let me go, I will tell you about a place with an ultimate weapon. They have barely anything there. Guess what? It's my father. He's a bitch. You'll have no problems there. Just go down there. So Lord Zod, the only son of General Zod, is the one that actually sent the cons there. Especially because the other one's dead. And great. I'm just going with the idea that we're going to have where (laughs) Lord Zod's Hey, Dad, I'm back. And he's like, what are you, bitch? And he's like, oh, oh, did you take care of those cunts? Because they were wimp asses. I told him to go your way because you could take care of them. I just think that he thinks that, you know, Zod and Ursa would have been able to easily take care of them because they don't end up taking down Ursa or anybody else because of what Lord Zod said. No. They ended up having that red that red sun generator. There's yeah. no way that Lord Zod knew that they had that. So when he sent them there, and they the funny thing is, they barely knew they had it. It seemed like that was like in a closet. Like, maybe we should try this. Press that button. It says, no Kryptonians. The only thing I could see happening with this is that the Neil Before Zod book goes on for 12 issues. Right now, I think the Sinister Sun says ongoing, but I can't see it that is lasting ongoing, more than six but I, thinking, I can't see it lasting more than six issues. I say it's going to last got. 12 as well. They're going to well, try to extend case. it. I can see this story going into a place where Zod wants revenge against his son for destroying well, their he, family for what he did. Does, and I yeah. can see this going in a direction where then Lord Zod needs to go to Superman for Sanctuary where people could finally maybe get their Chris Kent back. Well, maybe. Maybe that's how it is. He's on the lam as Chris Kent. That'd be crazy. Uh, I just think he's going to end up where Zod's going to be like, why did you do that? Well, first off, in the idea of it's a shame that Lord Zod isn't in this book. He's in Sinister Sons because I don't think even if he's like, oh, I thought the idea that what he told them killed his mom. I mean, he uh-huh. he loves his mommy. He's not like me. Or he, well, he, he loves he his kinda mommy. He kind of does because even when the mommy AI of the crystal shit that he had started talking about the idea, he's pretty much like, you stupid bitch. I hate you. <laughs> That's because AI doesn't have a soul, Eric, is oh. what happens. That's why. As I do those songs, you don't hear a lot of like funky songs. It doesn't have soul, Eric. But when you're doing that, I do think full out. He did not think he thought that they no, I can get out not. and they'll just get destroyed. My dad and, and will almost maybe even play the idea of like, Zod, your daddy, you're the bitch. Like you should have been able to take care of them. Uh, that's why I sent him your way. And he couldn't. And he did, though, there because he's just wrecking house at one point. They're like, oh, no, he's down at the White Dwarf Engine. They're like, should we get out of here? Can we finally leave? Nope, we're already done. It feels so weird, though. If, like, we're only in the fourth issue, but it feels like the ideas of this book have changed. Where the, yeah, uh, that's the what I'm saying. I think there was more, like, a cut. I think. It did seem like a weird, like, um, I'm trying to think of how, like, a more of a political kind of deal, the idea of trying to take out Zod for the betterment of the United Federation plants, even though they're corrupt as well, but they can't have, a, like, a rogue Kryptonian who won't join the ranks. So the idea of the cuns going down seems like a play on their end. I to think try this to is a can. course correct, though. I think that, and that it does. And, like, we're, like, Lord Zod is now the person to blame, and we're not doing anything with the United Federation so weird planets anymore. Because we thought, and I thought specifically, who told you, what, are you an idiot? The United Planets has been, you know, gunning for you this whole time, and that would have set, you know, Zod up to do that. But I think that maybe somewhere along the line, and not even along the line, where you ha- right now we have Hal and the Earthland, they're going against the United Planets, and I don't think they want to get this all mixed in. You don't need but how Zod. How cool would that be? But Zod is so crazy powerful. The like, Green Lanterns, the Earth Green Lanterns, and General Zod against the universe. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining at one point where the Earth Lanterns, they've actually. You know, fix things. You have the United Planets. They're like, good now. And they're like, okay, let's shake on it. And maybe Lobo, too. As Hal's shaking the hand, Zod comes in. He visions everyone. And Hal's just holding an arm. <laughs> like, what Gross. the fuck? He's like, they killed my wife and unborn kid. I don't think you can mix that in. I think that that's where. I think you can. And it's badass. Yeah. Again, though, maybe the other play would be more. Pe- you, you don't want people having to buy like they're not really t- i don't know but it does feel like at one point it was united planets united planets and now we'll see what this ship because as this blows up this could be you know suicide by kund because zod gets the brunt of it as well like he gets hit and he's just floating in space just what, what don't we just call apart. that suicide because he's the one that did this to himself yeah, it's the cunts though eric <laughs> if, he, if you talk to zod he'll blame the cunts for everything now you don't like him and then he's like I also hate the Jacksonites as he's floating. Like if I go right? to your house and blow it up with everybody inside, including myself, is that suicide by Werner? Well, if you came and I had a white dwarf engine and I end up, uh, no. Even the idea of the white dwarf engine being thrown out here feels weird because that's what, you know, Ray Palmer uses to shrink. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, now he's using it to burn. And then he's like floating again. He's like, and next are those fucking derelicts. 
I hate them too. That's just personal. <laughs> no, I agree. Like we'll, we'll yeah, say, you we, don't we like have the, the Derwins. Derwins. Well, we'll say they're the head of the United Federation of Planets right now. We need to take them out. And that's a, it. Is funny when we talk about things, and even when I first started reading a New Fifty Two, and we were reviewing things, and I had to end up giving you the uh, Green Lantern Corps book because I'm like, all I get here is Der- Derlins and guns. They always show yeah. up together. I'm like, I don't need this shit. I gave it to you. That was during uh, that big Derlin war. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's it's crazy. Like at the end. All I could think about, I hope these aren't the Reavers from the Fireflies. Or I thought, oh, my God, it's the Guardians of the Galaxy. It really feels like that, too. But you have the ship picking up. To, and in that, I don't think anybody could even imagine, like, oh, that's Zod or that. The oh, no, know, because Kryptonian. even the idea, he, he was blown to a smithereen. Like, not smithereens, but he was blown up to the point where, in my mind, he looks worse than Superman did in Dark Knight Returns when he took on that nuclear blast and got all emaciated and gross. Oh, looking. yeah, yeah, This gross. is even worse. This looks like that Attack on Titan character that, like has all the like the muscles and sinew and stuff like that for what Zod looks like floating in space. And so what we – I don't know if you realize this. They just announced it two minutes ago. They've rebranded this. It's now Zod Offworld. Is what they're calling it. Now he's going to have to fight the guys. <laughs> you, you say Zod Offworld. Like which world is – like – I'm just saying, it's like, it's like the Batman thing. He was on, he was on New Candor. Now he's off world. He's floating around. See, it works. Uh, but we'll see. What happens if he goes on and it is actually, he's entered into the Batman off world because he's also gone back in time. <laughs> see, it works there. White dwarf son sends him back in time. I'm just trying to think about boom. this gigantic ship that picks him up though, because it's next to says prisoner in exile, but like, what if this is a United Federation ship that actually tries it to like go nurse him back to health and get on their uh, like him on the side? And again, I whatever the ship is, is it gonna you know be able to tell who he is? Are they gonna have technology to even know what? But I'm telling you, like on that front there, those certainly look like if I was a kid, those would all be guns. They'd be like so oh, ridiculously bunch of guns. I actually thought it was going to be like a scrap ship that would pick them up, just some pirates or something, and then we'd have like a pirate crew. It's a big ship, though, right? It's, it's a, huge. It's a gigantic ship, but even like it, obviously it looks like an alien spaceship, but for some yeah. reason I get Jawa Sandcrawler vibes yeah, from it. Yeah, I kind of get that as well. That's what I'm saying, but I wish that it was like one of those things that Zod becomes a jolly old pirate and, and like, like he's, That's what you want from this book? Well, he's a space pirate now, and they go and they're like trying to get, collect ice, right? The yeah, ice bad pirates. ideas. <laughs> this is why I don't end up ever saying that I want to write comics. I just like to you know, yell about them there. I like to put them down is what I like to do because they're not going with my good idea. But yeah, it, it, actually, you say it. <laughs> it's a Jawa carrier. It really is. Are you going to have like, now I'm going to start saying things that didn't make sense. I thought they were going to start burning now. the feet. You know, they're burning the feet of Zod and he's doing that, but that, that was more Jabba's palace. Sure was. It doesn't work. Maybe they'll go to Jabba's palace. Maybe he's like, do you know, you know, hyper Space what? Jabba. Mm, mm, space job. He's thin in this. He, that's the twister. He's thin. No, no. He's just he's just in space. <laughs> he's just a slug. He's just in south. That's what it is. But he was in space before. But no, he was on Tatooine, Jim. No. Oh, yeah, you're right. I guess that's not space, Eric. Nope. I, I he's on it, world. I guess it's, it's Jabba on world number one. Uh, what would you give this? I would give this a 6 out of 10, and that's being very optimistic in mind for what we get here, because the opening ideas of getting rid of new Candor in an interesting way, because you don't know exactly what happened to it, sending the, the bottle city of Candor into space, and even getting rid of Ursa's body, which may be preserved by this weird nanotech-looking like swarm that goes over her body and everything else on the planet. That's all really interesting. Even the idea of, like, you know, Zod saying, I'm going to kill everybody, cool as hell. And then when the rest of the issue is just Zod killing everybody, <laughs> and then it's over, like, I don't know if it was all worth it, because it is just a bunch of cuns, like, like just look like Klingons the entire time, which is a big problem for the book. And the cuns have not been interesting this entire series so far. So it's like, there's some good stuff here, but whenever you get back to what we've had previously in the story, it just takes everything down a bit. Are they running cuns, Eric? Is that show? Uh, no. I'm going to go 6-5. Uh, I, I said to you when, when I, I had read this earlier this week and when we were talking about oh, the you know, what we're going to Yeah, that is big. But I that actually is it weird, though, when you think about the idea, oh, you mean that kid in that like all ages book now has pretty much killed his Murdered mom and his parents. Kids. Like it's really <laughs> odd the way you, you go with that. Uh, oh, the little scamp. <laughs> I think he's safe as long as he stays. Like that's the thing now. They're really putting it on Tomasi. If this ends up being canceled, Lorsad's done. He has to keep going in that. Uh, but in this, I said to you earlier this week when I was telling you about some things that happened in the books, whatnot, said it's such a weird concept of this like reset. It feels 
but it, it's big stuff. Nothing in this. And then one, I'll, I'll give Joe Casey a uh, credit. We just said about a very forced issue of Batman. This is weird because of what we dealt with and pretty much in the fourth issue, kind of putting everything aside to go. But it, none, it never didn't feel like Zod. It always yeah. felt like Zod. So I'll give them that. And I think that maybe it is that course. Even, correct. even though earlier in the series, he's felt like Sinestro. Yeah, well, maybe this is it. Maybe they said you got to... How Zod got his groove back. Yeah, he got his groove back by having his wife and unborn kid die. It's a weird concept, but I'm he got free it back. Man now. He's like, oh my God, thank you, cuns. He actually went to thank the cuns. He just does, he's a guy who doesn't really know how to thank people. He thinks you he's, burn them down look, and blow them up. I, I'm a hugger, but I got Kryptonian strength. That is true. He crushes them. And then there's a girl with a flower at the lake, and he's drowning her, right? Just throwing her in the Why lake. Why is he Frankenstein now? <laughs> Because that's what Frankenstein does, and that's what Zod does. You should watch Frankenstein again. Again? Uh, I, I, I'm telling you, most of my pop culture references come from little scraps of video or something I remember somebody saying, Eric. You, you really think I put that much effort into anything? Except my family. That's okay. where I put all the effort in it. It's, it's paid off dividends, Eric. It's paid off in spades. But well, good for that you. is it for, for oh, what I was saying. Uh, <laughs> oh, that thing. I didn't know what to give it because it's such an odd thing. And I'm with you, though, that I'm going to give it a 6-5. But really, I want to see what this ends up leading to, what oh, yeah. comes we'll from this. The new status quo. And, and that's all. I mean, that's the problem of doing, you know, one issue reviews or whatnot. But we've done this enough that it's one of those issues. That you're like, OK, I get it. Still confused a little, but. You're making some strides, but I want to see where you're going. Yeah. No, I'm all in for it. This It's a weird thing lately. A lot of these things, like we're changing a lot of characters over at Marvel. You end up changing up, say, Ghost Rider is now the Hood. You have Moon Knight is now the Shroud. And Wait, again, what? Eh, don't <laughs> ask, Eric. But when this happens, it's the same kind of concept. Like, okay, I'm not that crazed up. But like Captio even in this. Let's see what you can do with it. So I, I'm willing to do that. But uh, that's the deal. It's, uh, what I'm but, telling but why you is Ghost Rider the Hood? He has a flaming skull. Why are you getting rid of the flaming skull by putting a hood on there? Well, well, he's the character of the hood. I'm not saying it's Ghost Rider wearing a hood. He's wow. the character of the hood, but he does have a hood. Eric. I don't know how that hood doesn't catch on fire. And then you have Moon Knight, the shroud, right? The and, shroud. Then, and then you have Mary Jane as the jackpots, right? And then you have Joe well, Garrison as the punisher. And you have this and that. You have it all. You have it all, Eric. Oh, also, is, Ghost, is, is Ghost Rider just undercover? Like, is he playing a part like Eric the Red? No, no, it's the Hood, the character of the Hood. I don't know the, the Hood, so he's just like... But... Join the club. <laughs> he's now the Ghost Rider. He's elevating himself. There's like 80 other spirits. So wait, wait, wait. The, the, the Spider-Man villain, the Hood, is now the, the Ghost, Ghost Rider. Rider. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, what happened to Danny Reyes? Ask about what happened to Johnny Storm and Danny Kitsch. They, they, they're all fucking hanging out somewhere. And then you even had you had a World War II Ghost Rider in the Hulk book, right? Whew. Is it also, Danny Reyes? Uh, it is Robbie Reyes. Robbie, Robbie Reyes. I love, okay. I actually, it's funny. Robbie Reyes, to me, was a character when he first came out, like people kind of pushed back on. Now, because you don't get enough of him, people really did like him. I like that He's Charger. A cool character. That Hulk yeah. Charger's kick ass. And I'm not even a car guy. Right? I like it, Eric. I'd get under there and turn some nuts and bolts, I would. Uh, Which is- also, also uh, Black Widow's symbiote there there you go a lot of weird things going on uh chasm yeah chasm's coming back kane all that we were talking about that last night after our spotlight <laughs> uh but that is it for the first section of books a little marvel talk there confusing Aaron. but we're going to go off we have a, another section of books two more books to finish up poison ivy and the blue beetles i didn't think it was like the blue and green section right blue and green. Yeah, kind yeah, of. there we go blue and green. Well, everybody loves blue and green uh, doesn't that make purple I her? But we're going to go off to that right about now. As she was a smart girl, didn't say much. Fell under the spell of wood rule. He was a bad guy, should have had a hunch of what he was planning to do. The got down, if you know what I mean. Next thing you know, Pam was totally green. And all this made her into a... She's a villain. She hit the road, she was off to the city. Made Gotham her brand new home. And when Batman got in the way, she hit that jerk with the pheromones. It's all because Batman didn't see. He shouldn't get the 
An epic, Eric. An epic song there. And here we are with the section of books. Are you there, Eric? I'm here. Are you there? Uh, yeah, we have uh, both Poison Ivy and Blue Beetle, the blue and the green. I know that you have been a fan of both. I mean, huge fan of that Blue Beetle. But you oh, have yeah. been a fan of the Poison Ivy a lot more than me. And I don't know any info from you. Uh, but I get the idea because I kind of like this issue. That has to mean that you didn't like oh this my finale. Gosh. Yeah, it has to. I knew How it. I knew you it. Like this issue. I, I'm not saying I, li- I said I liked it more. I've been on the That's record of not really liking the others because of the weird play of it. But by the end, I'm like, all right, you, you're singing my song. We just have the Batman's and the Robins. I knew that you would be upset because it burned this idea, everything down yeah, that we've been doing this issue to go to Gotham and do Batman no, stuff for no it, reason. What it does in my mind is show you that, yeah, we don't really have much else to do here. And why didn't it center more on the gardener? Why didn't it center? And even to the point of, even well, I got to you know, try to get away or would you? Because we're going back to zombie apocalypse deal with baby birthing Woodrow. I don't know. It just showed you at the end of this. I was kind of joking about like, but I again, the Batman and Robin scene, I thought were okay. But the whole play, this was supposed to show you more and was supposed to do more. And you did end up generic in it up. What I was trying to do is make the joke of what happened in the uh, word journal book that every time that it kind of dumbed it down, I liked it more. But that was a different reason. But give us the credits for this and we'll jump into it. Poison Ivy number 21, written by G. Will Wilson, with art by Marcio Takara, Arif Prianto, and Hassan Atzmain Elhau. So where we left the previous issue of Poison Ivy, Pamela decided she's going to agree to do Woodrow's like plant experiment to become, you know, an animal-human hybrid, just like he's been doing himself. But for whatever reason, this time, it seems like it kills Pamela Isley during the whole, like, you know, process of it. And Woodrow, he gets scared and he runs away like a small little child. And that's the last you will see of Woodrow. Pamela, she goes to the hospital. The gardener sits at her side. But Pamela, she doesn't wake up in the middle of the night. And she is snuck out of the hospital because she hears the Gotham. It's a screaming in her head, Jim. And we never see the gardener again either. <laughs> so everything we've been doing with the idea of Pamela Isley and everything, like, you know, for this year one, it just says, okay, she done took We're the done. serum. She went to the hospital. Time to go do poison ivy stuff in Gotham. Like, you, you fucking ruined everything. First off, I like when she's like, I remember the back of Jason's head as he ran away. I'm like, if I had a nickel every time somebody said that, I'm like, that's a sexy joke. <laughs> is the it? idea, yeah. <laughs> the idea, though, is you're doing something different. You have a poison. This is a poison ivy book, right? And yeah. I, I'm just asking. And in the poison ivy book, she's done poison ivy things, right? Is that uh-huh, something? Kind of. So when you go, kind of, when you go back to this year one thing, though. You're doing it because you can't do like you're doing something different. You're going to show different ideas and set things up. But by the end of this, you just go to generic him poison ivy. There's no reason in a year one like this that you need to have her go to Gotham and then start being, hey, look at me. I'm the poison ivies. That's not what this seemed to be about. You end with that one panel of her walking there, right? Exactly. Her maybe even just saying to Batman around, call me Poison Ivy. Bam. You end up the whole thing. You have all the story that you should really be wanting to tell with the Gardner and Woodrow, especially for how big Woodrow has been in this entire series. We can focus on them like we have been doing because right when we leave things here, it is a nothing burger all yeah, the way I'm, around. I'm telling you. it. And again, it, it would be that odd play. And then year one of Stickler, I'm surprised you didn't mention it earlier. I forget what I was saying about year ones and twos or whatnot. You, you're a Stickler for that. <laughs> yeah, I don't usually you do. Uh, did I tell you that? I remember the back of J- I, you end up where at the end she could be going into Gotham and some, not Batman, but some guy's like, oh, who the hell do you think you are? And then she does her deal and goes, kill me, poison out of you. Boom. And then you go back. But it, you're not quite to that point. But you know what I'm saying. 
you want a cliffhanger light, but we you wanted the gardener. I mean, the guard. This should explain. This should have been the thing. And I, I wanted us to we, expand more on the origins of poison ivy with Woodrow adding the gardener and all this other stuff. And it, it just ends a few pages in to do basic bitch poison ivy stuff. Why I wanted the thing is because when we started out, you didn't have the gardener that much involved in something that was a story that fully involved the idea of Pam. You know, the Queen Ivy, the idea of the powers, what she did to her uh, before in the Joker War, I guess it was. We, I always, everything swarms together in that. But that whole power deal, even going back to the was Heroes in Crisis, fear state? it was, I might have been Fear State. You, you might be right. I'm telling you, they all go together at one point. But that was like, oh man, is she going to go after the gardener eventually? Is she going to do this? So I thought this was a clever way to maybe show a reason why she wouldn't or why there's a bigger connection and things like that. Pretty much all you get is last issue. Oh, the gardener came in. I don't like the cut of her jib because she's, you know, pretty smart. Let's make out. And then they do that. And then in this is the gardener. Oh, I'm going to be at your bedside, at your bedside. Wake up, go to Gotham. And then, yeah. but the Gotham, that shouldn't be on page four. That should be at page 21 where you have a cliffhanger. Oh, I get it. Like the idea, I'm like, I get it. She went to Gotham eventually. But like even the idea of who she be- she becomes, she goes to Gotham because she hears the green screaming because of how Gotham is and polluted and everything like that. That's why she initially goes. But I wanted her to have experiences of her powers to realize, realize things before she ever went to Gotham, so she could be this poison ivy character. It seems like she almost falls into the idea of like, oh my god, I got some powers. This is kind of cool. I'm going to do some weird shit with it. And then I'm like, wait a second here. Pam goes to Gotham, there's Batman and Robin, but I thought that Tom King told us that Pam was already in Gotham when they had the year one, the Joker war, and that sort of nonsense. I, I don't remember if Poison Ivy was in the war of Jokes and Riddles. She, she was. She was in, at one point, she was, like, killing guards and things in the, uh, in the what's it called, like, the Central Park, the park deal that he ended okay. up going to. Uh, but even so, they're, they're not going to play around. Uh, with other people's stories, like quite like that, especially with Tom King. And this, and this is more classic anyway for the idea of Poison Ivy's first appearance and Batman and Robin being at odds because of the pheromones. The thing about this, though, is that when you get to that point, you said it's basic bitch Ivy. It, it, it's stuff that, like, we want these things to give us stuff we don't know, not to spend an entire finale to show us what we already do know and just kind of play around with that. And it's funny because I said even on. Uh, previous show and some other things that I've done this week because this actually Gray picked this book as one of his book of the weeks in our video deal. He was convinced to do it by Sully. I'll blame Sully. But when when he was doing it and we're talking about it, I said it's kind of funny because usually when Batman's on the cover of things, it's like, oh shit, we're we're not selling well. I always hear that this is selling well enough. It was yeah. odd to grab that, but like you didn't need any Batman, like you said, until the end, maybe just to show as as a little wink. No, I agree. To have fun, but I, but I assume that we have to go here and do this. I don't know why we have to do it in this way. Probably because we're in Gotham in our current continuity story of this book. But you know, it's like, oh, I'm Poison Ivy. Fight the bad bands. Get sent to Arkham. A voice on another side of uh, cell tells me to just tell them what they want to hear so you can get out. Oh, I'm Violet, by the way. And I have to assume that we're just introducing a new character that Ivy will come in contact in the present day once we get out of the year one story. Because, and I never saw her again. But you know what? I did get out of the place because I did what she said and told them what they wanted to hear. And they thought I was fine enough to leave Gotham, uh, Arkham Asylum. Yeah. At one point, I'm like, what was the An- Anchoress's name? I'm like looking that up. I'm thinking that it's some crazy deal here. Like, and but when that one doctor comes in and says, "Hey, you shut up in there, Violet," I was like, "Ooh, I thought it was going to be some sort of spirit or something." But it's just thrown there, and it's weird when you do see Violet. Like, looks just like Pam. It's very yeah. odd. Like, looks like a twin. Well, that's actually, the thing. It's the th- I, I don't actually mind looks the art a little like Janet thing. from HR. Well, that's Maybe the thing. The... It could be Janet from HR. It could be Harley Quinn without the white, like you know, alabaster skin. It could be pretty mm. much anybody. I because... actually thought it was going to be Harley at first. Actually, but... yeah. Yeah. So did yeah, I, I, I maybe we'll find out. But maybe. she wouldn't have been around at this point. No, and uh, I know, and that's why I was thinking, like, what are they playing there? And like, all of a sudden, it's going to be like somehow it's Janet from HR because it looks like her there. Uh but. Just this idea of her and Arkham and then, hey, tell them what they want to hear. Tell them what they're, you know. It's like when you're a kid and you realize, hey, when my when my dad's beating me mercilessly, <laughs> I can't even say it, you, you uh-huh. cry because that's when he stops. You learn that, like in the, the Nirvana song, Eric. Uh, but you end up where she gets to, it's weird. Oh, man, I just was in town and I kind of wanted to get the Batman's attention. Okay, you could leave. <laughs> like, I don't know. That still seems crazy, but. She gets out and then runs into, you know, Batman and 
And this is a fine part of the book in my mind because the idea is Batman and Robin have already faced Pam. They know about the pheromones. And when Pam starts talking about the idea that we should be working together to clean up this city because she's speaking some sense. Like he's doing the crime fighting, but the city is, has way more problems than just crime because she can hear the green screaming like you saw at the beginning of the book. He thinks it is just the idea like, oh, my God, she's talking sense. It makes sense. Batman a Mu- little dummy, though. Must be. Her- and I'm saying it's still kind of early days for Batman must at this be- point. But I'm saying it must be pheromones. Must and be this, Batman like, pheromones, yeah. He, he won't trust Pamela, even though she is trying to be legit in what she's discussing here. And it just pushes her away and be, does more Batman stuff, which causes her to continue on doing Poison Ivy stuff in a worse way than teaming up with a Batman. And the thing is, he's there. She's rubbing on. He's like, OK, I'm, I'm getting real turned on, but she's talking sense. But so it must be the turned on part, because that, that's the only way it makes sense to me that he's like, fair, but Batman's smart enough to be like, Okay, I agree with you, but you can't do it the wrong way. You're like, all of a sudden, you got the pheromones. It made me giggle. And then he gets the hell out of there and goes, takes a cold shower. Or maybe goes in the bathroom for a while and runs the water. Uh, but really, at this point, though, we're done. I mean, th- that's how quick this issue is. It's oh, I so totally quick. Is, because at that point, like, oh, the pan- a poison ivy year one. No. We're back at current day where Pam was coming to to her terrible freaking like ripped open stomach that Woodrow crawled out of. She's got her Lamia spore suit powers back up and now she's ready to face some like Woodrow baby monsters and a freaking horde of zombies. And so what this has done, like it, it really didn't do anything to the gardener, but established that they were friends. Hey, she was there. Slash making out. And uh, and this Violet, I, and, like whoever that is, maybe that'll play out. But that that's about it. I mean, we knew Woodrow was a piece of shit. You're going to give a little more details. I some wanted some in there, more but... pieces of shit and some more reasons to care about the gardener for this because it was our first opportunity to bring the gardener in ever since James Tyne and created the character. Said, "Oh yeah, she's from the past. She like knew Ivy for a long time." But we finally got a chance to see that, and like it was barely anything that you couldn't even just, for the most part, like yes, she was there when Ivy turned into Ivy. But like pretty much everything else, what we what we got, you could just suss out from what James, Ty- well, little James Tyne, and give us what the origins of the character. You just needed some more, and I did just I did not need to see Gotham Poison Ivy bullshit that you've seen a million times because we're finally doing something interesting with a retelling of Poison Ivy story in a new way. Yeah, it's weird. This is going to be one of the quickest reviews ever. I mean, there's not much to it, and even then, like she's they're playing it off. She heads in the Gotham. She's kind of she's not bad. But she, you know, this one dude shows up. Hey, what's up, bitch? And she's like, oh, hey. And then all of a sudden the pheromones kick in. He's like, oh, you're so beautiful. And I thought the idea where I I would love to have the play where she, like Batman, thought, oh, like she actually doesn't realize how beautiful she is. She, oh, that guy could only like me for the pheromones. I mean, this guy probably would have said the same thing without the pheromones. I mean, look at her. Uh, but, you know, he ends up, I like when he passes out and goes down. And then, boom, she's in the costume. A lot of this just felt like. Okay, I got to get the fan service in before we get out you of here. didn't, because you were doing something that felt important. To me, to that's not away. what this was about at all. It was not about that. This was about, you know, really establishing some of the other characters. And that's the problem, where I think that maybe G. Willow Wilson wasn't as committed as what you thought. I'm going to go with you because you were really looking forward to where it is a Poison Ivy year one. But in a lot of times, like these stories, especially me and Zach doing our Patreon year one deal, a lot of times it's more about the other characters involved. And that's what this seemed like. Like when you have a Batman, you want like there's a lot of Gordon stuff in there. Yeah. You, you get establishment of those and the connections with them. So having the gardener, it obviously not a poison ivy thing, but it is. It's part of the whole thing and kind of just got shoved and aside. You, you didn't even get enough Alec and Linda Holland as far as I'm concerned with the idea of continuing on with that continuity where they were all part of the same research group. Yeah, it would have been cool for them to continue doing the research, have that back and forth, what that might be, and then even establish some things more of what might be the green and something like that. Exactly, the idea of the green and being one, like even outside of Woodrow's control, which might even be a way to lead Alec and Linda to the like the revelation how like you know with the the serum they would create that would lead to a swamp thing and stuff along those lines. Just something so they would understand what they're working on more because of the the human like plant hybrid that Pamela has become. Yeah, and have that play that might lead to more stories down the line. Like you could even have her because she says all this. Remember, is that she's kind of dying and her life is flashing, you know. Yeah. Like, and so she's really maybe the only thing again that is so like a sore thumb sticking is that violet thing because that just happens yeah. near the end. But some of this could have been the idea that, man, I got to get a hold of Woodrow, like not Woodrow, uh, Alec. I got to see what's happening to him. That could even lead into some interesting things with Levi 
and what's going on with the green and things, but it, it all just is or kind even of with like, the, the, like surface outside, level. Even the gardener, like with her own research, because they are so close, and like she is doing animal plant hybrids through animals, but with her, like you know, with what Pam is now, it could like exponentially increase her research for what she's currently doing, and they could like work together on things. But no, it's just and I left her while she was sleeping, and who knows and when I saw says, her again. I don't want to connect her to me to get. But what now they're talking, I think that what this could have been is a little closure to end up going. And it's still she may try to do this. She will listen. But at the beginning, like going into this book, like it, the gardener was pretty high on the shit list for for Pam. If you show a little more of how she helped her and actually Pam even thinks I forgot all about this shit. Like I even try, and then maybe you can kind of fold the gardener more into the book proper. To kind of help out or do Give something. Give me more of a I'd relationship. Like yeah, because yes, yeah, she did saying. sit by. She sat by your bed side while you, she, you, know, you were dying and recovering. Which you wouldn't have seen like, anyway. It's funny in a sort of thing when she wakes up. But yeah, this is a person who trusted you and wanted to keep you. Of like to the whole idea of the naive ivy and the queen ivy. Get to the point where we can see like why she is that special that she would be able to do these things. Like I said, G Willow might actually still try to do that, but it would have been cool to see more. Or if it's nefarious, see what was going on or why she's doing. But at the end, it's just like, oh, she was there because she felt, you know, and she she's liked there. Or whatever she That's was it. there. That's it. That's it. She said, and you know, show her come in, and when Woodrow's going away, she like trips him at least. <laughs> like I'm not saying I'd... this is the best year one story that I've ever seen, obviously, but it was competent up until this issue. It felt like you know, like I just you were doing some good things in my mind but, to make this but book the feel like it's. And then the Batman's obviously the Batman's here, so we got to do the Batman's. It just, it just feels like a like a lost cause for all the good like steps you were taking along the way. And I, I want to spell it at the beginning when I was I was joking because when I read this, I just the whole time I'm like, oh, Eric's gonna hate. Like Eric is gonna hate that. That's usually when I don't know is when I start messaging you about things. Hey, how about that poison ivy? Huh? I knew you were good because you, it, you it ends up falling issue. flat. Now, it, it, the idea of it being dumbed down joking. like, well, no, I'm saying the idea I was going with <laughs> that they dumbed it down. And that's what I have liked more with that word journal. Yeah. Uh, but I knew that, again, I'm kind of like even keel for this whole thing. I didn't love some of the other things. And this whole series has been so wacky in my mind with the idea of changing it. We talked about it before when they end up six to ten to ten to ongoing. It always seems to have a little course correction. I think Janet from HR is one of the worst characters. It's like. That is the kite man of the series, and I've had enough. That people are gonna. I like. Kite man. I hate bringing up the kite man because I know people did love it, but it's just there's no reason for her. And in fact, when you get out of this, if you didn't have Jenna from HR, it would have been real cool for her to go and seek out the gardener to end up having her involved. But there's already a couple too many things going on. But back we got a to, Solomon Grundy and a Killer Croc already too, on top of a Harley and a Jenna from HR. Yeah, because she kind of pops out and. Even the idea where you have where she's given birth to this crazy Woodrow kind of thing. We thought it's she was dead. Monster. Yeah. So what you would think that we would have, oh, I get it now that year one reminded us of this, that, and the other thing that could stop this. But we didn't get shit. It was just, hey, let's do that. And then the way it ended was kind of plain. But I'll tell you, at the end, butt cheeks galore. Like that last <laughs> page. Holy moly. Look at them butt cheeks there. You could bounce that. I'm all right. I, you could bounce like a silver dollar, not just a nickel. Okay. <laughs> you know, silver dollar. Uh, well, okay. gee, I, I also like at the end where that's the play to Solomon Grundy. He's like, holy shit, look at them butt cheeks. He's looking right at them. You can tell. He's right there. And then Janet's like, oh, my God. You can tell, butt huh? Cheeks. It's all butt cheeks. All butt huh. cheeks. Uh, what would you give this? I would give this a five out of ten. I think the art's fine for what it is. Uh, like I don't, I've never really had a problem with this art for what we, like, yeah, I like we've it. had in the book. Even when we think it's more cartoony than others, I love. But. I actually mentioned that this week with the art because I do like the art. But but when you go back and look, I, I'm glad that you finally admit it. Like it was so much more cartoony, but it's fine. But the way. thing is, the issue that I was arguing about did not feel cartoony. The next issue felt super cartoony for some reason, even though it was the same artist. <laughs> you know what's weird? It's weird too because usually when you do these, you will change an artist for like a year one you'll, you'll uh -huh. get that different look and they didn't i think the cartoony stuff would have worked better in the year one but on, actually it's funny we say that what the marceo takara tries to do a little cartoony look when you do get classic ivy and gotham too when mm -hmm. you get the classic feel but but yeah the story just fell flat going to gotham became basic bitch ivy when it was i felt like it was doing something important along the way and it decided ah sales are more important i i agree and it's weird because i hear this book sells well so we'll have to see 
Uh, again, I think that a lot of these books are heading towards like, hey, you're you're doing your thing now. We'll keep you going until September. Or so after Absolute Power, and a lot of these things may, you know, change up or go it's away. Crazy, I, the Poison Ivy's gone issue number twenty one. Yeah, though. that's pretty impressive. I actually, you know, I have to give credit to G. Willow Wilson. When any time, if we put it, and I'll probably put this review on YouTube. I'm warning them now, Eric. When this goes up, people start yelling <laughs> about. I, it's fine if you like it. That's fine. We just we're here more for a story and especially your one to go. But a lot of people who are up place Ivy fans really, really dig this. So all the power to it. Uh like Gray. Uh yeah. but we'll go to the next book. And now I, I mentioned the idea of books like, why is this still going on? I, I do think this blue beetle because is just it's like finally we're just gonna let you go. No, it's it's not. it's it's a wreck, this book. But uh, again, I'm not joking now. The book's a wreck. Uh, but what are we talking about there? Blue Beetle number eight, written by Josh Trujillo with art by Adrian Gutierrez, Will Quintana, and Lucas Catoni. And in this issue, I'm telling you, the idea that it feels like we're fitting out the cast a little bit, we're tying back to the 80s Ted Cord book with like, you know, continuity and stuff. It almost feels like Josh Trujillo is doing something like I, we're not there yet, obviously. But it seems like we're actually on the path of doing something that ties in the classic Blue Beetle war. It's not, it's not going to tie in anything. The guy's dead. He's not going to be a part of this. He's done. And that is him looking up Wikipedia and finding a random name and throwing it in there and really doing it poorly. No, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Uncle Jarvis and stuff like that with Victoria Cord by the end. Uh, that's all just lip service. That's just, oh, you know, just like Uncle Jarvis said. It's not tying anything in. But it's not. No, no, it ties it in because Uncle Jarvis was evil, which will take her on her heel turn to show us that this could be a big bad for Blue Beetle going forward. But we already, for three issues now, we know that she's bad. I mean, we see but she's she hasn't bad done now. anything bad, though. Well, she has been in the background of, hey, I'm going to figure out how to kill things. And hey, Jaime, you want to know how to kill this thing? She has been bad. Other heroes have been saying that, too, like Tracy 13. Yeah, no, I'm saying, though, there's it's it, at the end here when she, if she doesn't say Uncle Jarvis. If she's doing Uncle Jarvis stuff on Pago Island with, well, with the nothing shocking robots, to me here. I wasn't shocked at the end. I'm like, oh, my God, she's bad. Like, it's no, been no, the so idea over that it's the tying top into the Uncle Jarvis stuff with the indestructible robots that he planned on taking over the world. Like, this is a bigger story than we uh, it looks like a bigger story than anything we've had before. I just think that's I, again, I think that's lip service, just like this villain who pops up. I think that he's just throwing things overthrow? in. It's not even part of it. Yeah. He throws an overthrow mentions. Okay. I don't think any of this will matter. I don't think it's going to be part of it because we still end up having aliens we said the horizon and at one point where jaime actually goes to the horizon to talk about a scarab makes no goddamn sense and then you end up where you even have natitos like i used to be like the spinning the records and shit and i'm like i don't even know who the fuck you are but at least you thin that out but that's exactly. only to, but no that's only is, we, that's only to give the scarab to why would she give the scarab? That, that doesn't make but, sense but thing is she, she wants the scarab gone because she does not want the superhero life that it was thrust upon her which i can understand she thinks that everything was way she more go to the horizon before. well the thing is she maybe she go to horizon but the horizon the one who put it on her in the beginning yeah with. but it she could say like, we don't want to do it they, they don't seem that crazed up about it they don't even seem to be that hyped up they're leaving but even with the idea of the horizon they might be leaving as well thinning out the heart of what's going on in this book which might be a shame because it seems like the uh the um, I don't uh, the leader of the Horizon. His daughter seems to have the hots for Jaime, so that could have been a really cool love experience. So I don't know how. Or maybe she'll stay. The problem is uh, here's the, here's what I'm saying in my mind that you're giving Josh Trillio a lot of credit for. Uh, I think this is all editorial. Finally waking up and saying this book is well, a hopefully. fucking wreck. But I don't think he ever read it. We read Graduation Day and uh-huh. now eight twelve issues. This guy is terrible. He can't tell a story. He can't get out of his own way. I'm not going to say that suddenly he, he a, a fucking light bulb went off and he's like, oh, my God, I'm going to do this. I think he's just getting rid. It's still going to be bullshit. And the point where the idea, oh, Natita, what happened? You, oh, I gave the scarab to Victoria. Oh, my God, how can you do that? And then, oh, by the way, Victoria's having a big press conference that she has this new tech and nobody sits there and says, I think it might be the scarab. <laughs> They're like, just go there like, oh, let's see what this is up to. It all feels like bullshit to me. Well, even the idea of the scarab, I can't say for certain that this new, like, you know, robot tech that she's going out there, because honestly, this actually feels big to me in the way that it almost goes along with absolute power, where she is doing something with Cord Industries right now. Ted's in the hospital. He's in a coma. Whatever, however, he's still hurt. But Victoria, she's completely in charge. This feels like the idea, like, we're, don't be worried about superheroes protecting you. We as people are going to be able to maintain our own stuff. 
with the idea of this new robot tech that she's doing. It goes a little like, you know, a little bit too far when Overthrow shows that it tries to get revenge for the death of his father. But when we have this going on, I can't even say that this new like robot she's doing, especially who's bringing up Uncle Jarvis and the robots that he created, because that, that, if it's more along those lines, I can't say that the Scarab is actually involved with this uh, robot right away. Yeah, there's, he has done nothing in 12 issues that shows me that he's going to dip back into anything, including when we just talked last issue where it was a tribute to Keith Giffen and didn't even know the fucking shit he was doing. He messed up all that stuff that easily not messed up. I think it's fully the Scarab. And I do think it's weird, too, where the Horizon are like, yeah, we, we kind of fixed everything. And uh, we don't like uh, Palmyra City. We're going to go to Ace. And I'm like, why don't you get the fuck off Earth? Like, why why even stay in here? You you were on the run and ended up crashing here. Get the fuck home. Well, I need a new home. No. And, well, get it. Uh, Earth just doesn't seem, if they're going to go from Palmyra, oh, we're just going to change a city that A Town's a fucking wreck. Right? People are going to kill them there. But again, when you do this and all this play of, and it might be good to thin the herd because I'm telling you this book is a mess. But so when you do this and you've already done this many issues and you realize, like, what did they do with the, the Horizon aliens? They did nothing. At one, and really the idea of, oh, man, everybody's hateful here. We saw one scene in a coffee shop. Get out of town. And like, oh, God, we got to get out of here. Nothing was Don't really set MC up. Bay. The one thing that seemed to be cool would have been the different color scarabs, right? You have almost like a, you know, a team of scarabs there. Never really did anything with Ziamora or Natita. So now Natita seems like she wants to get back to spinning the records to get to the point. And the big thing I have a problem with it is this whole stuff and this whole issue especially is a lot of other things, not Jaime. Jaime actually is just walking through. Oh, I'm here? Oh, what, Natita? You, you got rid of yourself. Oh, let's go here. Doesn't really deal much with them. And the fact that he killed somebody. They do ask him, hey, how do you feel about that? And he's like, I don't know yet. I'm gonna, well, and he's then being goes, haunted by it. You can see it in the beginning of the book. Yeah, but again, that's just a, it's thrown in there. So, But then you just get past it. Now he, there's no repercussions on anything. And then the last issue, we had this Keith Giffen thing. And you have, I think it was the Amora, whoever says, hey, what did you do, you know, last issue? Uh, oh, I can't explain that. It's just, it's just bullshit. Plus, and even the idea of what he is talking to the shepherd Ood of the uh, Horizon, yeah. and the legato mode that he has that was the but reason. Why that would he the Horizon up... know anything or do anything with a Reach sort of like I wouldn't because go to they them were about once it. Reach. The idea though that they're gets and actually sent people to do, I think that that's not all the. I would never go to them for any advice. That has to do with anything of that tech because well, of the thing is, what they, they are like against the reach. They sent people. They sent people to kill Hami because they thought he was evil because he was of the reach. But they understand the technology because they've built their yeah, own technology. That was the weird thing, though. But like I'm saying, like he could be like, "Don't use that because they're planning to." It's just weird to go there. But again, he has nobody else to go to because. Uh, yeah. And then he finds out that uh, what Brenda's working for Victor. Like all these things happen out of nowhere. I don't think this book is going to go past 12 issues anyway. So whatever we're setting up, I mean, it's not from what we can tell, it's not even in the top 200. So I, I would doubt that anything will be tying into a book that just but sells as a one Blue of the Beetle worst fan, thing. I'm seeing things here that actually feel like a Blue Beetle book for the first time in the series, and I can only hope that it continues going forward because I actually found myself enjoying this for what it's trying to do. We'll we'll keep this on record because this is starting to sound like. I think Megan Fitzmartin gets the Robins now. I, I think that's all it is. It's there to fool people that like you. It's there to fool you and just throwing shit for no reason. And and really, well, by I'm the end, well, there you go. I I just don't know. And again, it's not hitting with me. So I just think it's more of the same bullshit being thrown at me because the idea Ted Cord they it, that whole play should have been bad. It's just. I can only hope with the idea of the Keith Giffen tribute that we had in the previous issue when you brought in Johnny DC, which was awful, and them yelling about the idea, are you, you tech? Think that are you, actually uh, was oh, real, and he's like, I'm going to no, get no, no, back I'm to not, the deal? No, no, not the idea that it's real, just the idea of almost an eye-opening experience, like, I'm going to actually do something with this character that's going to define it, and not only that, but tie it into the Ted Cord's background as well more. You say that. In that issue, one of your main complaints was he got so much continuity wrong. Oh, it's true. In that same issue. So I, I don't think he knows what he's doing. I think he's an awful storyteller. I think that this book's a mess. I think he's just going to make it more of a mess. In fact, Overthrow being it, you shouldn't even put it in. 
you're trying to send the herd. You threw this in for probably just this issue to show. Over oh my god, she's somebody evil. there to get taken down by Victoria Coit's robot to show how over the top. I it don't is. really think you needed that, but you, you ended up. You could have even had where Ziamora with the scarab maybe you know reacted to these. If it's not the scarab involved with this robot, uh, and maybe hurt somebody we care because overthrow goes and really the big play. I told you in joke with Victoria should have said disarm him because that's he kind of. Blows up his arm and the arm disarmed. Yeah, something like and that. I, I wouldn't and be surprised if somehow the the green scarab gets attached to overthrow here to make him actual legitimate threat. I, I don't, I don't even know how that works. I mean, just that Ziamora or I mean, Natito was able to uh, just hand it to, you know. Well, I mean, not, it's weird. It wasn't handed to her. It looked like it was surgically removed. Well, through I'm science. saying, but she let her do that, and that it could just be there. It just felt weird, and. The, it felt like they were also saying because Josh Trillia wanted to really play the idea of it wasn't so tough because even when you end up having the alien, the horizon, he's like, well, you're kind of more there, Jaime, because you, you have it like really connected to you. And that's why you have the deal. And I don't know. It just felt weird. It felt weird. And uh, none of that really went. I actually thought it was funny that uh, it should have probably explained more in that editor's note. But by the end, I'm just thinking that we're are you know i'm arguing with you more uh but nobody cares because nobody reads this book but me and you well, can argue i just think Beetle that fan, you might enjoy this more this issue than you have previously because it finally like jaime doesn't take the front and stage that you want him to do because it's a jaime reyes book but is de- making call outs to people who are ted cord fans to say maybe this is worth reading because it looks like we might be doing something yeah victoria cords a new character was introduced because the movie created a victoria cord character but it might be legitimate at this point for bringing uncle jarvis the indestructible robots and all that past history that ted cord has had especially with her making her own robots and who knows what she if, if let's just say that she has used the scare technology to even make the indestructible robots more powerful with this whole thing who knows at this point in time i just know that it seems like it could be really big if, if you are a blue beetle I fan. just and that's the thing i wonder I, I wish I at points I wish we had some sort of technology that I'm like now everybody push a if you know what Eric said like that sort of thing to see uh, who is involved because uh, I don't know even like true Blue Beetle fans that would still be reading this maybe or also just how many there are anyway because it's not selling so I don't know it's like it might be too late to try to prove that you know a character after 12 issues that you've probably you know, kind of did bullshit. I mean, even the idea of going to Palma, like every step of the way, he seemed to be going against things. And now, like, well, that all just of a seemed sudden, to be realized, a tie into the movie. That seemed like something he was. But again, to do. I don't think that he uh, to me, he I never sat there and read this and thought, oh, he knows what he's doing. And he's knows he's this character. He's just been doing wacky stuff. Starfire. No, this, being connected. This, I'm saying, though, this is the first the first issue that let me think that like he might be in, like he might be doing his research. He might be having a handle after 12 issues. It's too late. I mean, it's never it, too late to be good. Well, it you've already there's first impressions, and you've already have a you have a year. I'm going to be here for issues. every impression. Mm-hmm. I'll give you one. Here's my impression. I think that Megan Fitzmartin finally gets it. <laughs> I'm telling you, I can't wait till I can say that one issue is better than the rest. Oh, I'm just saying. I I really can't say one issue out of twelve. Makes me think that he knows the character now. I think that he looked some things up. Somebody told him a couple of names. And he just threw it out there. And because the idea of Victoria, I want to make her evil. I'll mention Jarvis, but I I don't think that's going to have anything to do from here on out. That was just a name drop to go, oh, my God, for three people. Well, if she wants to make Uncle Jarvis proud, that's a huge deal because Uncle Jarvis was evil as fuck. Now, is Uncle Jarvis even alive? No. So how's she making him proud? What, is he up in heaven? He's sitting there on on a – Yeah, that's true. He's going to say he's sitting on a cloud. He's there. He's getting his – his butt poked with a pitchfork. He's like, boy, you're doing it, Victoria. Him and Dan Garrett died together. It's such a weird thing with that where you have that going on and then you're just like, come on, Ted. Like, wake up. Let's do something. We don't know and what's knows, happening Because even all that stuff ties into Carapax as well. So who knows what the plan is? I just know with these names being said and tying into what's going on in Blue Beetle, it finally does feel like a Blue Beetle book. And I can appreciate that. Yeah. My, my final thought of it is if it really meant as much as you would hope. It would have been explained more, not just dropped. And even that that crazy, like, editor's notice, just go see that. Not even, if you want to see what happened to, you know, Overwatch is dead, 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 like, say something more than just that. It just didn't feel Overthrow like it was that doesn't important. matter here. Yeah, I'm saying that to lead into the idea of Carapet, all that kind of connects into each other. But I don't think that it really, I think, again, I think it's just lip service. 
but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. From here, what would you give it? Oh, I thought the fun, like I'm not a very been a huge fan of the art, but I think it does a better it's job okay. here because it feels less manga than it likes to be a lot of times. And it's I never think maybe manga. it's because well, I'm saying manga. I'll, I'll tell you what I I actually were talking to people. I would say it's or more anime esque. Vi- I don't video know. Video game slash anime is what I, okay. I think it more well, is along like. those lines. But like it, fe- it felt a bit less at times than it has been previously. And maybe it's because I was enjoying the story more this time than I have in pretty much all of the other Blue Beetles, but I'm going to give this a 6.8 out of 10. It's not a perfect issue by any means, but I think it is the best issue that Josh Rule has written so far. Well, I uh, I think the art actually is better in this. I think that it, it just the, uh, you know what, uh, because I know what's going on. It's mm-hmm. it's not like Speed Force bad, but no, this, I, never, I never really liked the art in this anyway. Maybe it's because the hair was always wacky and shit like that. It's not as wacky here, but... uh. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get anything from the story though, so I'm a four point five. But it's not that much. I mean, it's not like you're saying it's a nine. No, uh, I just didn't think it was that good. I do want to look up before we end up getting off. I was going to look up the. I swear, the next solicit will probably be such bullshit mentioning it that it'll just drive me nuts. But we'll, maybe I'll do that later. Uh, okay. But at the end, that's it for the show. So I end up here's. I have a, a theme song, Eric, because we're going to go to our book of the week. I don't know why the theme song for the book of the week is so nasty. To I what, do. What is your book of the week, Eric? My book, book of the week is Blue Beetle <laughs> number eight. Yeah, mine, I guess, is Zod. I think it's okay. Zod. But yeah, it's 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 funny because we, we've talked about it at the end of each episode, like the last couple of weeks. By the way, that was the book of the week, Eric. Did you know uh-huh. that? I don't know if you knew that that was my book of the week. Pretty good, right? It's so long. Because I thought it'd be funny. There. I cut it there. It's it's two minutes long. Oh, God. <laughs> and it, it doesn't change. It's just that over and over. I thought it was funny. Uh, but uh, we keep saying the idea like we, we want one of those nine out of tens or something. And they're oh, yeah, kinda, totally. Six and six point five, but I'm sure that some people six point eight. Yeah, well that that's one of the highest you've gone. So yeah, I'm I'm Neil before Zod. I think that's again when we're talking about this and I'm yelling at you and stuff. I just don't like you to look like a fool. That's what I want. want, I'm just sitting here like you don't know anything about the Blue Beetle. That's why you don't like. I just don't want it. But I think that in that now you're just going to say, well, I'm just giving my score. But the idea yeah. of it, because he hasn't said anything up, he hasn't really given anybody anything up until now. I don't think anybody knows or is caring about it. So it's not it's going to be a book. Poor Blue Beetle fans. Maybe you get a couple issues out of it that you're like, OK, this was better. But I think it's way too late. And I don't think anybody really cares. But I just, but we'll yeah. be here every step of the way. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Eric. I think I'm, I'm going to end up, you know, passing away soon. Oh, having yeah. Some, yeah, I'm having some problems. I, I didn't want to bring this up because You've been having problems for like the last well, nine years I know, and those add up Eric. Don't well. you know math? <laughs> they add up I, I don't think, and it's weird because I have a song about it, Eric, that I have It's one of those where this is actually It's a cry for help I'm very sick <laughs> I'm the book of the week Because I'm very weak Why does he call him a jerk? Like, these people you are You tell me, Jim You tell me I don't know why he's so hateful I don't know. Who would that be? I've been asking that question for years. Who would that be? That's Spoon James, I think, Eric, from back in the day. But here, there, those, uh, did I mention that those were the books? Here are the books for next week. I, I want to look up that solicit because I swear I want the solicit to be like, now that Victoria Court has, you know, gotten rid of Jarvis. I'm, here's what we're going to talk about I don't about trust next solicits week. anyway because half the time they're all bullshit. Yeah, I don't trust Josh Trillio to tell a story, but there we are. Half the time they're all bullshit. I don't know if that math works out either. One, two, three, half the time. <laughs> You're the Yogi Bear. <laughs> 60% of the time it works every time. It's, it's like 50% is 100% mental. Oh, my <laughs> goodness gracious. Oh, that's great. Uh, I, I forget one of the things. Mickey Rivers was pretty good with things, too. It's like they talked about the idea that it was windy and he's like yeah i think the wind was like 80 degrees or <laughs> he had some wacky things i'm like eh, he just Not was weird. a little a little crazy uh here are the books that we're going to talk about next week i wonder if there's going to be a book of the week i had a couple segments that i planned that's what i went i had like three others and i i bailed on america thank god right i i ended up having some i wanted to change things up is this too. why you were late today 
one of the reasons. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also actually, uh, I was trying to get a song that we, we probably will never use. I was doing that, realized it was later that I thought, had to read the books, but still wanted to finish the song. So I was kind ah. of doing it back and forth. But I think I, I did it there. I did it. Here are you the did books. Something. Here are the books next week. I had a, a, another segment was the What Did We Learn This Week segment, but I forgot to set it up because I was going to say to you. Because you didn't learn anything? No, I was going to say to you, like, while we were, before we started, make sure you kind of get a couple. Oh, there were two. One was, What Should We Call This Podcast Episode? That was one. Uh-huh. And then the other was, What we, what Did We Learn? Uh, but I'd have to tell you that before because you'd have to take notes. You know, like, keep in mind. Like, what we learned is Eric is a very optimistic guy on the Blue Beat. Yeah. Right? That's what we learned. We well, also learned book, really. that Zod's fucking crazy. Like, that sort of thing, right? And Chip Starsky, you said that he is a, what did you? you egomaniac. Didn't call egomaniac and a son of a bitch. See, there you go. We did it. The I, goal. I didn't load up that theme song, though. All right. Here we go. Did I mention Book of the Week? Action Comics said, oh, these, these are next week's books. There are seven. We've had six okay. for a bunch. But have you been waiting at one, like, you keep thinking because of how we've oh, done this. Dump? Yeah. Like yeah. me and you have done this too long to not think that we're going to get that week with 16 14. Books. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm like, it's got it. But each week I'm like, oh, I keep okay. waiting. Yeah, I'm too. Like seven now seems a lot. That's also the problem. At one point we were doing 20 books on the podcast and Ridiculous. doing it overnight. Then when we got back to like, oh, all of a sudden we have 10. And then they went up to like, it, we couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> like, holy shit. Action Comics number 1,000 up. See, I keep starting it. These are the books next week, Eric. What happened? I'm having problems now. Uh, did I tell you that I'm weak? And a book. These are the books for next week. Two of these will be picked by the badasses of the Get Fresh crew <laughs> for our Patreon-only spotlight. That's the show that comes out every Thursday night on our Patreon. You sign up. You can listen to that. A lot more things as well. And you could get a free trial, seven-day free trial, where you can check those out. But two of these will be that, and I'll kind of guess by the end. I don't think we guessed last week. Action Comics number 1064, we end up starting out the House of Brainiac, I believe. That's uh, uh, happened. There's always a house. And yeah, that Brainiac, he's a smart guy. He does the Is it a house in New Orleans? Maybe. <laughs> is it called is. The Rising Sun? Ooh, wait a second there. But see, I I try to get away from the parodies. The parodies now, yeah. now you start getting me fired up. And I get to do that. Action Comics number 1064. The next one is Batman and Robin number eight. All right. Yeah. Team up there. Shush is teaming up with Batman. Shush is teaming up with the Batman. I, I want them to team up for like half a year. And then when they get done, Damien's like, oh, God, Dad, thank God we now know who Shush is. And he's like, oh, shit, I didn't really try to. It was hush all along. <laughs> That's all. Like, Tommy like, Elliot. Shush gets so annoyed. Like, I'm sick of this Not hush shit her. and leaves. Like, she's, that's how she leaves Gotham. Like, I got to get out of here. Green Lantern, number 10. There's, a There's book some there. good shit about that book. And I, I am excited about that because what we had seemed that you weren't exactly. Some people may have given you a little guff. A little guff? Did. They didn't. They actually. They were actually pleased that you liked it as much because most people, when they read stuff and you change a little sort of things, they think that you are going to be so upset. But we did like it. It gets a place where I think the book can be a lot better. So we'll see how that is. Just like Blue Beetle. Oh, it, I said we have seven books there. We do uh-huh. not. We do not. <sighs> oh, no. I guess maybe. No, I'm saying we. Mathens hard. Did we talk about The Outsiders? We did end up talking about it last we time, did. right? Yeah. We have seven. I was thinking we did, and I thought we were down to six. That book Come on, sucks. Jim. Imagine the places we can go now that we had the monster ball of last issue. It's a fucking monster mash. <laughs> I'm telling you, the idea that the agent. Nocturna's having the Antichrist. The upside down man. This, I never liked Luke, him, but the Luke guy Fox started looks like. Into the, looks into a reflection, <laughs> and he sees Duke Thomas of the Dark Multiverse, Jim. Imagine the places we can go. Oh, I, I'm death. I'm glad you're saying. I'm desperately trying to think of the one thing that would make you say, wait a minute, I think they get it now. I can't come up with anything, though. No, I can't come up with anything. It'll be, you know, all of a sudden they'll say. When they finally start telling a story, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that book sucks. Uh, We have Sinister Sons, number three. All right. Um, Maybe something will happen to that issue. I like when Snarky Eric shows up in the previews. Like, I, I... you were pretty. Look, you were, I I haven't read the new issue yet. The previous issues have sucked. Oh yeah, then. Yeah. Oh oh. See, you did it. I thought you were going to say 
the previous, but you threw in that caveat that you read the current one. I almost got you with the Blue Beetle. But I yeah, know. You like this new issue. Well, you, you gave it to that. I bet you Chip Zdarsky's ears are still burning from that shit you were talking about. Ego fucking maniac. <laughs> What character is the biggest character ever in Batman? I love the idea that I end up losing my Shut mind up. at points and then people will throw it at me for three years. You lose your mind, it'll be, man, that was awesome when Eric was yelling. Ah, uh, that one guy. There were a couple of people when you weren't doing the things for a couple of weeks and they're like, man, we got to get Eric back. You're a miserable <laughs> Mr. Positive over <laughs> yeah, here. Like, look at this guy. Book of the week is 6.8. Look at this answer. Awesome. Uh, Eric, you, you want to hear? Isn't higher, though, than you know before Zod? Yes, it is, I believe. Mr. Positive. <laughs> Last week, my book of the week was seven. And uh, that was pretty good last week for my book of the week. <laughs> book of the week. Book of the week. You like it's that enough. driving beat? Oh, I'll check my mail. Sounds like Kanye at the end when he yells at, doesn't it, a little? Well, uh, I don't really know what Kanye sounds like. <sighs> yes, you're you're lucky. Uh, here we I like Kanye, though, as a rapper. Right. As a rapper. Okay. Uh-huh. Mm, you know, you know me. I, t- I do, maybe. <laughs> I, who's your favorite rapper of all time? You like the Mace? Is that who you like? Mace? <laughs> no, I actually hadn't thought about Mace in a long time. Uh, do you like uh, like uh, what's his name from uh, uh, Third Base? You like him? Yeah. The one right. guy, what's I, his name? I, I'm telling you, I can't remember their names now. The the one the one guy looked like Reggie. Made me laugh. Uh, what are we talking about? Uh, my I think Books. my favorite rapper is still uh, uh, Rakim. I think he is my all-time. I think his voice was the the best. I love that, that tone that, that he gets. That's wrong because Easy E is obviously the best voice. Well, now Easy, well, that's the thing too. Easy E, though, like, like I guess we're just saying rapping, not writing the raps, because a lot of they, the word is he didn't write a lot of his stuff that it was written by his Cuban stuff. He does have a cool voice, but Rakim's sure voice is so good. Like, I'm telling you, you're one of the only people I know that would pick Rakim out there of everybody. Is n- you are fooling yourself, there. You look it up. Look up top. Yeah, pretentious assholes. What am I, Chip Zdarsky? No, no you're an egomaniac. They give him a master plan. What no, Rakim's good. I just don't think he was the best. I love any time I, I do, and I'll, I'll like walk around, I'm doing some Eric Thea Rakim like you would do, walking around. Obviously. But the fun thing is just doing the, the scratching with your voices. Deaf with the record. I'm doing stuff. But the idea, Larry, I love the Beastie Boys. They're never going to be in the top deal, but I also love Run DMC. Yeah, you know, they're, they're little, they're little balls to the wall yelling a lot of times. So I do like them. But Rakim, you look it up. I bet you there's at least if you look up two lists, I've one of those a lot of pret- number like, one pr- pretentious lists before. I, just because people know something doesn't mean they're pretentious. <laughs> Speed Force number six. There. All right. I, at one point, I was leading into that of saying some nonsense. Uh, the idea that. Uh, We'll be finishing that. That's is that it's weird. We did it, everybody. We we've had a lot of bad books. How do you rate that? Now, I mean, we haven't read the last issue. I'm sure it's good, but is it? it that's what I was going to say. It's not anything that I'm, I'm mad at. I'm mad when I have to read it, but it's oh, yeah, not it's awful, one that I sit there and say it, it harmed anything. It's like so once I'm nonsense. done with it and we're done talking about it, I forget about it completely. And once we're done with it, I will never think of it again. Unless I have to make a joke about something as comparably bad. <laughs> See, so that's that's it. It's just put in your compartmentalized it in a place where if I get something horrible. You can't hurt me no more. Yeah, because if you thought of some of the other, like you, like you didn't mind Cyborg that much. But I thought that that was complete. I think everybody forgot about that already. Uh, yeah. But something like a uh, fire and ice it, it got a little I think wacky the previous and... two cyborg books were actually worse than this last one for the story that it was telling it wasn't executed perfectly but the idea the background and the ideas were there the thing is well, that ended up being that ai argument so i'll never forget it but also brought back the booyah, yeah, made, the booyah I love the booya. made the booyah cool again eric is what it never stopped did. being cool yeah, I like that it, it threw it in the idea that it was his mom's thing. So then anybody who would hate on it is like hating on his mom. <laughs> it's like brilliant. That was she never good. done nothing for me. Mm, that's true. She might have done something for me back in the day. I spent a little time in Detroit. I met a Did lot of know? people. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I, I was I was hanging out in Detroit. I might have, you know, met a couple ladies. I don't Motor know. Motor City motherfucker, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Motor City mouth, they call me. Uh, Speed Force number six, though, will be one of those. I, it's even a title that people won't even like jive with. And the big question will be, will they? But I guess 
they haven't put out every story in trade. Like some of these, that this might not, you know. I, I, I agree. They probably will do it, though. It's bad. It's pretty bad. But that's it. I think right. that's seven books, right? We also have I didn't count. probably be doing uh, a side deal. Batman First Night number two is coming out. See if I'm going to do that again. And uh, who was? Oh, it was Stork. Geez, Stork was ripping that book apart. He was. He should have heard what he was calling me when he was talking about it. Like I, you know, simple probably gym. Cause. <laughs> simple gym. <laughs> probably. I and it the made his is, eyes rain. It, it ended up. I, I'm looking at my mom. It was, it, it, I think that week it might have been my book of the week, Eric. Sebra Kim. So mean. So mean spirit. Now my goal right now is I don't want you to be able to go and watch WrestleMania. We are barely even done this podcast, Eric. Actually, we are done. I, I don't think WrestleMania starts for like an hour and a half, so I'm good. Yeah. It's back in the day. Eric. It's back in the day podcasting. We're going to go you sun up, back sun in the day down. Podcast. I'm like, you're just going to talk about random things while I sit here and look at my what's mouth. Your, what's your favorite Transformer? <laughs> it's funny. You're looking at the mail. Everybody's tuned out. So we got free reign here. What is your. No, no, no. Don't put we in this. Uh, what, what, is, what do you think the. the uh, not books of the week. What will be the Patreon spotlight? I'm actually trying to load up. Speed here. Force and Action Comics. Speed Force, that's the thing, too, when we talk about it. I think Speed Force has been on there, just like you. Has been. Has been. I can't I find never this. never been. <laughs> yeah, that's actually was a thing that I had where I was playing hockey. And, you know, the, the quick down comment at the one point, and this one guy called me a has-been, and I called him a never was. And I thought it was hilarious until I got home, and I'm like, that guy called me a has-been. I got, I got so upset. I'm like, am I? Am I a has It was like 30 realized. years ago. Yeah, and I was 70 then. I was a has-been. I, I ended up where I was getting a little slower. Can't keep it up constantly. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> a little slow. I can't find this thing. I, I don't know what's going on. So what books are you looking I, for? Honestly, at this point in time, I don't even know what you're looking for. I'm looking for the thing to end the stupid show. Here, while I do this, uh, I got, okay, I got it. I got it. Yeah, Jeez. Like, like, what, 531. What, what books do you think will be the deal? What, what do you Action think? Action Comics and Speed Force. I think it'll be... It hasn't Maybe bat- Speed Force and Outsiders. That, that's going to be it. <laughs> oh! I didn't say one last book here. Then if you were counting at home. Suicide Squad Dream Team number two. Oh, cool. That's kind of... That. Yeah, I, I... Maybe. It, was, it wasn't horrible. I, yeah. I want more of a story. Remember, it was just kind of like meandering about. I had theories, though. Remember about the whole thing with the the uh, the revolutionaries and stuff. So maybe I'll be right. But there it is. It loaded up, Eric. We can get out of here. The right. funniest thing is you're like, we're talking all this time. I'll just edit this shit out. And, you know, it's all waste. Again, but- you say we. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're reading your mail. At least I'm here, you know, yipping into the yappings. I'm yeah, doing you're doing what- something. I'm doing what is on the marquee. Talking. Eh? Talking shit. What is your book of the week? What is what? What do we say at the end? Eh? Everybody have a great week. We keep it weird. Weird, and we'll see you in seven. See you in seven. Every other show sucks. That's why you're listening to us. Every other show sucks. We're the only one that is in us. So thank you for being smart from the bottom of our heart. Thank you for being smart. Cause every. Shut your mouth. Every other show sucks.